Ayan, okay. Ito po yung seminar outline natin. <coughs> yung historical background and revelation, may kinilang yan. The purpose of writing revelation. What was God's purpose in writing revelation? The four ways revelation is interpreted by Christians. Okay. Revelation 5, pag-aaralan natin. Obviously, we cannot go uh, chapter by chapter of the book of Revelation. Medyo, what ito? Sidious. And <coughs> 22, 22 chapters cannot be covered in one day. Okay. So, pag-aaralan natin Revelation 5, the little book, with seven seals. Pag-aaralan din natin yung Revelation 13. Pag-aaralan ito, mga relevant sa atin ito. Beast, Mark, and number 666. And the other beast. Meron ibang beast that Colossus. At na kanya natabunan. But this, obviously, apparently, survived the earthquake. Kung yung seven churches niya. Ngayon. Yan po, ang pan. This is the greater area. Ito yung seven churches. Right? Nandiyan. Ito yung Rome. Yan ang Corinth, yan ang Athens. So, yan, yan ang kwan, yan ang center ng civilization nung panahon na yun. Okay. So, para magkaroon lang tayo ng idea, that Cyprus, right, uh, Sicily, of course, uh, Rome, nandiyan. Yan po. Ito yung sinulata ni John. Just well not in Greece, right? Oh, Greece. Uh, Kaya, ito yung Greek. Uh, Alright, so more or less alam natin yung general area kung uh, saan. Now, Patmos would be one of these islands. Hindi ko alam kung maninda nila dito. One of the islands. Okay. Now, what was the situation of the seven churches at that time? The seven churches, as with the whole Christendom, were under Roman persecution at that time, though not as severe as the one under Emperor Nero, under whose rule some of the apostles died, notably Peter and Paul. <clears throat> Although under silang persecution, hindi tulad ng persecution talaga ng panahon ni Nero, na para silang mga dagang hinahangking talaga. Right? Ito, nung panahon na yon, basta wag silang mag-hold ng buwan, ng... Uh, public uh, worship nila, okay lang. Hindi sila, hindi sila pinapakilaman. Ibig sabihin, underground sila. Maybe it, it would be similar to our situation here. Or probably a little bit severe. Right? Tayo, at least tayo, na kapag uh, gather time, ganun. Ganito. Sa Saudi siguro, parang ganun. Hindi sila pwede. Out of talaga yung ganito mga gathering. So, ganun, ganun ang sitwasyon nila and probably comparable sa, sa sitwasyon ng uh, Christiano sa, sa China o kaya sa uh, North Korea. Ganun ang sitwasyon nila. But they were under persecution. Okay? What was the significance of these seven churches in Asia? The seven churches form a cluster. Kung may hita nyo, pan sila. Kapit <coughs> sila. Although, panyon, uh, in terms of uh, one kilometers, uh, mga panyan, from 100 to 160 kilometers ang pinakamalaki. <coughs> yung iba, 20 kilometers, yun yan, uh, 40 kilometers from each other. <coughs> so, cluster sila of local churches located in cities well known in the ancient world well known yung mga cities na yon pergamo was a center of uh, one uh, commerce yung uh, ephesus was the big city parang new york yan nung panahon na yon so kun sila magkakalapit sila cluster sila they were along the major commercial routes at that time they were the melting pot of commerce and trade as well as of ideas including religious ideas between east and west Babalikan natin yung ating buwan, yung ating buwan, ito ang buwan, west, right? ito ang east. Nandito ang Medo-Persia, nandito ang Babylon, right? nandyan ang Iraq, right? Turkey na ito eh, nandyan ang Iraq, nandyan ang Iran. Right? So, east ito, 
etong West, nandito ang Italy, nandito yung Van, yung Germany, yung uh, France, nandiyan. So, pagka magka-commerce sila, dahil wala namang aeroplano nun, by land, normally ang pa nila, dadaan sila dito, magpunta dyan. Pagdating nila dito, pwedeng mag-hold na sila sa Corinth, tapos papunta rito. Yan, pwede silang dumaan. So, panito, crossroad dito. Kaya mahalagang panito na uh, lugar sa panahon na yun. Dahil daanan dito ng mga taong pan, komersyante, basta pan, you know, maaaring tourist, tourist lang. Yan ang main route. Okay? So, Uh, the constant flow of foreigners and visitors through this church hub facilitated the propagation of the gospel throughout the then known world. So, kung merong kwan, merong uh, additional light na ibibigay ang Diyos, padadaanin dito sa seven churches na to, pagdaan ng mga bumibisita dyan, na po pa nila, na i-share nila, na idadala naman kung doon sa mas malalayo pa lugar. Right? And so is heresy also. Right? Kung kaya kung makikita ninyo, May mga warnings dito sa Revelation tungkol sa uh, Nicolaitans, mm -hmm. yung mga kwan, teachings ni Balam, etc. Hindi lang ito, kwan, uh, daanan ng uh, truth, <laughs> propagation ng truth papunta sa ibang lugar, daanan din ito ng one, propagation din ito ng errors. Itong lugar na ito, dahil dyan nag-meet yung one, maraming tao. Right, so, both ways. Okay? Ganyan ka-importante itong seven churches. Kaya dyan pinadala ni, ni Juan, ni John, itong sulat niya, na alam niya, alam ni John, na this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay. So, interesado si John na kumalat ka agad ito. Kaya dito sa seven churches niya, pinadala. Alright, the purpose of writing revelation. What was God's purpose in writing revelation? First, Revelation was given to reveal Jesus Christ to his servants through the things which must shortly take place. <coughs> In other words, dahil nga progressive ang kwan, ang uh, pangunawa ng uh, mga Kristiyano sa katotohan. Now, this is not to say that Jesus Christ is not the final uh, revelation of God to man. Kwan po yan. Uh, undisputed yan sa mga Kristiyano. Jesus Christ is the perfect image of the invisible God. Right? Uh, you cannot go beyond Jesus Christ. But then, our understanding of Jesus Christ is progressive. Okay? <coughs> Yung truth na nasa Kanya, hindi mo yan mauunawaan sa, not even in the span of one, the lifetime. Kumayan. Right? Uh, yan. <coughs> and therefore, Revelation was uh, written in order to give further illumination into the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the theme of revelation from the very start of the book. Sa pan pa lang, inumpisana yung book na yan. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Right? Which he has given to his servants para malaman nila uh, makilala nila ang ating Panginoon sa Christo through the things that must shortly take place. In other words, the events that will be unfolded in Revelation will further upon make known Jesus Christ to the churches. Mas lalong makikilala ang ating Panginoon uh, ng, ng mga churches na ito. Okay? Uh, the theme of Revelation from the very start of the book. Yan ang theme. Therefore, the interpreter must seek the Christological element, the significance and meaning of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection for man's salvation in the prophecies and messages contained in Revelation. Kailangan yun ang makita natin. Kumisan, hindi na, 
Dahil sa sobrang buwan ba, sobrang dami ng mga symbols at yung interpretation ng mga symbols, nawawala taas dun sa talagang focus eh. Right? Kaya nabawa, ang dami rito ang uh, mga animal na makikita. Yung mga beast. Right? Tapos merong lang. Hindi natin na uh, nakukuha yung pan, yung Christological uh, pan element ng ipinahali ng Diyos dito sa Revelation. Mas sa uh, misan, natutuon pa, kasi sino ba yung one? Sino yung beast? Sino ba yung one? Yung uh, dragon? May beast dyan, may dragon. Misan, natutuon yung ating one, uh, pansin, doon sa mga bagay na gano'n, na po pa na sa sidetrack tuloy yung one yung uh, main theme of the Revelation. <coughs> Parang one yun eh. Uh, bibigyan ko lang kayo ng one just to catch the spirit of uh, one, Revelation. <coughs> Dito makikita ninyo mga iba't ibang uri ng hayo na uh, nagsanib sila. Imagine ninyo na lang na uh, at this time Uh, uso ba yung kwan? Yung arena. Alam niyo ba yung arena? Hindi yung kinakain, ginagawa, kinakain. <laughs> <laughs> arena. <laughs> arena. <laughs> A-A-R-E-N-A. Sa, sa panahon natin ngayon, ba? pwede yung stadium, pwede yung kolosyong, kung saan ginagawa yung mga games. Right? <laughs> Imagine niyo na nasa arena kayo. Nung panahon na yon, mga gladiators ang pinanonood. Atayan talaga na. Uh, mga mantirigmayan na mga slaves usually. At yung uh, mga malalaking armies, magpapadala sila ng kanilang champion. Lalaban dun sa mga slaves na yan. Uh, Atayan talaga to the death. Nakita niyo sa good siguro yung, man, yung film ng tulad kay Cesar. <coughs> Pag ginano niya, ah, papatay nung man, nanalo, papatay niya yung uh, kalaban niya. Pag ginano niya, bubuhayin. <coughs> Imagine niyo nasa arena kayo. Tapos naglabasan yung man, mga hayo. Magkakakwan sila, magkakampi. Siyempre, isipin mo sino kaya ang one. Anong, anong klaseng hayop ang ilalaban dito sa mga gambuhalang hayop na ito na nakatatapot ang <coughs> itsura. Tapos biglang may lalabas. Isang lam. Okay. Kung panunod ka, ngayon muna, ilalaban ba itong lam na ito dito sa mga gambuhalang ano ito? Beast? <coughs> Hindi yung no match. Hindi na kailangan magsanib-sanib pa itong mga dambuhalan ng uh, ayon na to para lang sa isang lam. Hindi pa, one eh. Hindi pa yung talagang torong, one eh. Yung torong uh, uto pa. Lam. Maliit na kwan pa lang ito. Nato pa. Pero nung kwan na, nung magharap-harap na, siyempre, sa kwan, mali kabuk yan eh. Malikabok. <laughs> Ang pala, nagpapaka uh, na. Tapos nung mahawin yung malikabok, patay lahat yung mga magandang buhala. Yung lam, ang kwan. Yung nakatayo. <coughs> yung, yung mga ganong klaseng kwan, dapat na kuha ng uh, nagbabasa ng revelation yun. Dapat na yung spirit na yun na, na, na kukatch natin. Ha? Kamanghamanghang man eh, kamanghamangha lamb versus this uh, one terrible beast. Pero at the end, sabi ng uh, banal na sunatan, and the lamb has overcome them. <laughs> so, <coughs> panin natin, i-focus natin yung ating uh, yung ating pag-unawa uh, sa revelation. Okay? <coughs> Second, to give comfort, assurance, and encouragement to the Christians who are suffering persecution because of their faith in Jesus Christ 
and their witness to his gospel. This means the prophecies and messages contained in Revelation were relevant to the originally intended recipients of the book, the seven churches. This does not mean that Revelation is not relevant to Christians today. Nung isulat ito, ang original intention to give comfort and encouragement dito sa mga Christians na ito na under persecution. Okay? So, itong sinulat na ito, relevant ito. Bakit ko uh, binibigyan ito ng one, pagdidiin? Kasi may klase ng interpretation, pag-aaralan natin yung four, merong apat na klase ng uh, interpretation na yung one, yung uh, isa o dalawa sa kanila, <coughs> irrelevant dito sa mga unang recipients. Parang walang kinalaman. Eh ano, kung uh, ganyan nga ang interpretation niya, ano pa kinabang namin dyan? Eh, parang gano'n. So, kailangan malaman natin na relevant sa kanila itong messages na to. Okay? Are the prophecies and messages of Revelation relevant to Christians today? Revelation covers the period from the time it was written in the first century AD, 95 AD, to the creation of the new heavens and the new earth, spanning the time that clearly includes our time. Siyempre, nasa pagitan tayo, 95 AD, ang uh, Revelation 22 is about the creation of the new heavens and the new earth. So, nasa pagitan tayo yan. Ibig sabihin, may mga events sa pagitan nito at maaaring sa panahon natin, sa panahon na bubuhay tayo, na nailarawan na, ng, ng revelation. So, relevant sa atin ito. Why are the messages and prophecies of revelation written in Jewish apocalyptic literature? <laughs> Kakaiba po ang, pan, ang literatura ang literary genre ng uh, Revelation. Special na klaseng literatura ito. Unique sa mga Jews. Kung tawagin nila ito, Jewish Apocalyptic Writing. Ngayon, ang Jewish Apocalyptic Writing po ay meron siyang one, kakaibang uh, kakaibang karakteristik. Right? Unique sa mga Jews. Pero naiintindihan ng mga naunang Christians dahil laging may Diyos sa panila, sa congregation nila. At first, majority ang one, ang uh, mga Jewish Christians. Right? In fact, sila ang nagpumpisa ng uh, Christian Church, mga Jewish Christians. Kaya lang nung ang gospel ay maiba na, maibahagi na sa mga Gentiles, naging minority na lang sila. But then, during the first century, laging merong mga Jews sa congregation ng mga bad Christians. At dahil doon, yung kanilang uh, unique style ng uh, literature, yung Jewish Apocalyptics, naunawaan na rin ng mga hindi Jew ng mga Christians. Kahit na yung mga Gentile Christians, naunawaan na rin nila yung Apocalyptic writings. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> Tayo, wala na tayong one, alam dun sa style nilang yun, right? Kaya, kailangan din medyo reviewin natin, balikan natin yung, ano ba yung Jewish Apocalyptic uh, writing, para maunawaan natin kung ano ang revelation. Dahil ang revelation po ay isang Jewish Apocalyptic writing. Uh, Jewish Apocalyptic is characterized by its heavy use of Old Testament images, Symbols, numbers, and terminologies. Conversations with angelic beings and creatures. Yan po, kung babasahin ninyo ang uh, Old Testament, yan ang one, yan ang feature ng Old Testament. Right? Merong mga uniquely uh, one, Old Testament and Jewish sa, one, sa Old Testament. Yung temple, okay? unique yan mga furnishings ng temple. Mahigita nyo sa Revelation, puno ng well, mga images at symbols na ganyan. Naalala ko tuloy, <coughs> meron akong naka-discussion uh, sa FD. Pinagpipilitan niya, may temple sa langit. Kasi, ang sabi ng Revelation, and the temple of God in heaven was open. Sabi niya, ganun na 
may temple sa langit. Sabi sa Revelation eh. Ay sabi po, sa Revelation din sinabi, there is no temple in heaven. <laughs> Labasan niyo ba yun? Walang temple sa langit. Right? Bakit? Kasi ang temple, symbol niyan ni Jesus Christ. Right? A temple is the dwelling place of God. Yun po ang one, ibig sabihin ng temple. Templo, temple is a dwelling place of God. Ngayon, hindi naman natin makakuan, maunawaan kung ano yun, dahil kung tayo, we are teachers of uh, uh, time and space, hindi natin maunawaan kung ano yung dwelling place ng Diyos. Ang ginawa niya, gumawa siya ng one temple. Ang sabi niya sa, pan, sa mga Israelites, Make me a sanctuary or a temple that I may dwell among you. So, dwelling place niya yun. Okay? Kung maka- mababasa niyo yung mga sinulat ni Juan, ni David sa Psalms, pag sinabi niya, house of the Lord, yun ang temple. Doon nakatira ang Diyos para sa Kanya. In the most holy place of the temple. Pinananahanan niyo ng Diyos. Yun ang Juan, yun ang uh, physical symbol ng presence ng Diyos sa Israel. Nung dumating si Jesus Christ, <coughs> siya yung sinimbolize nung temple na yun. Ang sabi niya, I will destroy this temple. You will destroy this temple and in three days, I will raise it up. Ang sabi ng mga Jews, 46 years, kinayuyan ng ba? Mga forefathers namin. Tapos, gigibahin mo, itatayo mo, three days lang. Pero sabi, paliwanag sa atin, Jesus Christ was speaking about the temple of His body. Dito, sa body ni Jesus Christ, nanahan ang kabuuan ng pagkadyos. Siya yung talagang pinanahanan ng Diyos, ang ating Panginoon si Cristo. So, He was the temple. Siya yung sinisimbolo ng mga temple ng mga Diyos. At nung dumating na rin yung reality, wala na, wala na, wala na, wala na temple. At wala rin temple sa langit dahil walang symbolic sa langit. Okay? Walang symbol sa langit. Reality lahat ang nasa langit. Okay? Walang temple po. Basahin nyo sa Apocalypse. <coughs> there is no temple in heaven. Ang sabi, the Lamb is its temple. Okay? So, pagamat gumagamit ito ng mga images, right? kailangan wag mong ililiteralize. Dahil nga simbol sa kwan yan eh. Gumamit siya ng mga literal na bagay sa Old Testament. Pero, nung gamitin na niya sa, kwan, sa Revelation, hindi na literal yan. Symbolic na. Kaya pag sinabing temple, sa, sa Old Testament, may temple talaga, physical building. Pero pagdating mo sa Revelation, hindi yan physical building na, kwan, na, I-literalize mo, temple pa. Ah, Tulad yan ang temple sa Jerusalem. No? Okay. <clears throat> so, use of one, images, uh, symbols, numbers, yan. Ang, uh, ang mga Jews, pero silang uh, <coughs> Jewish numerology. Okay. May mga meaning sa kanilang numbers. Merong one, meron silang numbers to denote perfection. 1, 3, uh, 7, at saka 10. Ito ang mga numbers denoting perfection sa mga kwan, sa mga Jews. Pagka na kwan mo, na basa mo yung mga numbers na yan, you, you don't have to take, sa revelation, ibig ko sabihin, you don't have to take it as a literal number. Okay? May meaning yan sa kanila. Alright. <coughs> Firstly, bakit na isulat sa Apocalypse? Since Christianity was outlawed by the Roman Empire, communication through letter was dangerous and therefore must be done discreetly. In case the letter was intercepted, yung uh, letter ni John, intercepted by Roman authorities, they would not understand its messages being in apocalyptic writing. So, maharang man nila, hindi <laughs> nila maintindihan nila. Makik- <coughs> makikita lang nila doon yung mga grotesque na animals na. so, hindi na maintindihan <coughs> thing is, secondly, Revelation is tied to the book of Daniel in the Old Testament 
which is also apocalyptic literature. Apocalyptic literature din ang Daniel. And so part of Ezekiel also. Right? Apocalyptics yan. Uh, in fact, as we will see later, Revelation is the unsealing of that part of the world which was sealed until the time of the end. This is another truth that is often disregarded by many expositors and interpreters of Revelation. Merong one connection and revelation sa Daniel. Makikita natin yung little book na sinasabi dito sa, kwan, sa Revelation. Yun actually ang portion ng book ni Daniel na hindi kwan, hindi ipinaliwanag ni Gabriel ni Daniel. Anong ibig sabihin ng mga kwan, na vision kong ito? Sabi nung angel, Daniel, sabi niya gano'n. Kwan, silyado, sealed ang mga words right? until the time of the end. Hindi kwan, magpahinga ka na. Hindi niya ipap, hindi pinaliwanag ni Gabriel sa kanya kung ano ibig sabihin. Pagdating sa, libera- sa Revelation, dito na unsealed kung ano yung hindi ipinaliwanag kay Daniel. Being an apocalyptic literature, Revelation is a highly symbolic book that must not be interpreted literally, but contextually and Christologically, using the rules of hermeneutics, foremost of which is the Bible interprets itself. Makikita ninyo, yung interpretation natin, kukunin din natin sa Bible. Hindi ka lalabas. Right? Ang gagawin lang natin, tingnan lang natin. Titingnan lang natin. Dito sa mga sinasabing ito ng Biblia at in-interpret natin using the Bible, aling powers ang umaakma? Anong mga bansa ang umaakma sa mga descriptions na ito? Right? Kasi kailangan ma-fulfill ang prophecy. Eh. So hahanapin mo kung saan, kung saan ma-fulfill. <coughs> aling bang bansa ang nag-fulfill ng prophecy ito? Kailangan ba? gagamit tayo ng kwan ng historical reference para lang malaman natin alin bang bansa ang tumupad ng kwan ito ng uh, prophecy ito right? pero yung mga interpretation doon natin kukunin mismo sa Bible we will use historical references only for confirmation of our interpretation based on hermeneutics gagamit tayo ng mga kwan, rules of interpretation. Right. Ito yung mga four views. Merong idealist view, preterist view, futurist view, historicist view. Briefly, ipapaliwanan lang natin yan. Yung idealist view, also known as the spiritualist view, which uses the allegorical method to interpret the book of Revelation, was introduced in the ancient church by the ancient church father Oregon and made prominent by Augustine mga prominent na church fathers yan. according to this view the events in Revelation are not tied to specific historical events right? hindi sila tied talaga sa in other words wala sila <coughs> specific na historical fulfillment okay. <coughs> The imagery of book of the book presents the ongoing struggle throughout the ages of God against Satan and good against evil. In this struggle, the saints are persecuted and martyred by the forces of evil, but will one day receive their vindication. Yan po ang van. Paniniwala yan. In the end, God is victorious and His sovereignty is displayed throughout the ages. One idealist and Paul is an idealist yan, summarizes this view. Revelation is a theological poem. <coughs> poem lang. Right? Ano, anong ibig sabihin pagka poem? Hindi yan yan. Walang literal na fulfillment yan. Yung spirit lang ang kukunin mo. Right? Behind the words. <coughs> Presenting the ageless struggle between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. It is a philosophy of history wherein Christian forces are continuously meeting and conquering the demonic forces of evil. Now, the main problem with this view 
it denies revelation any specific historical fulfillment. Hmm. Eh, problema yan. Dahil, obviously, pagka binasa mo ang one, ang uh, revelation, makikita mo na one, historical prediction ito eh. I mean, uh, prediction of historical events na mangyayari. Okay? Sabi po rito, uh, Symbols. The symbols portray the ever-present conflict between good The symbols portray the ever-present conflict between good and evil but no necessary consummation of historical process. Revelation 1.1 states that the events will come to pass shortly implying that John was prophesying future historical events. Second, second <coughs> objection, a rising does not follow any hermeneutic rules and can lead to interpretations that could even contradict the writer's intended meaning. So kung i-alegorize mo lang yung one, yung uh, mga nababasa sa revelation, ang mangyayari niya baka yung allegorizing mo eh, kontra pa dun sa uh, intended meaning ng writer na si John. Wala kasi sinusunod na rules of interpretation ng allegory. Mm -hmm. Yan ang mahirap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ito, pangalawa, the preter is due. Yung word na preter <coughs> is past. Mm -hmm. Ibig sabihin, there are two variants of, pre of preterism. Full preterism and partial preterism. Full preterist believe that all the prophecies and revelations were fulfilled in AD 70 that we are now living in the eternal state or the new heavens and the new earth. Masyadong naib itong kwarto. Obviously, kung ganito ang new heaven and new earth, okay na ako sa earth. Okay, so, medyo pa yan. Ngayon, mayroong partial preteris. I believe most of the prophecies of Revelation were fulfilled in the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. But, the chapters 20 to 22, ito medyo nag-isip ng konti ito. Sabi niya, okay, lahat ng kwan, from 1 to 1, 1 to 20, 19, from 1 to 19, lahat ng chapters na yan, wala na yan. Obviously, wala pa yung new heaven and new earth kaya at hindi pa dumarating si Christ. Yung Revelation 20, eh, dyan yung what? Pagdating ni Christ, okay? <laughs> Obvious naman na eh, hindi pa dumating. Obvious naman na wala pa new heaven and new earth. Kaya sabi nila, itong partial preteris, ito, 22 to 20, ano, 20 to 22, future pa yan. <laughs> <laughs> so, as historians, trace the roots of preteris into Jesuit, Chris Luis Alcazar, who introduced this view to counter the Protestant Reformation's historicist view that identified the Pope as the Antichrist with the number 666. Noong panahon ng Reformation, na-identify nila, right? True pan, studying of Revelation, ang ginamit nila. Itong, ito yung ginamit nilang pan, interpretation. Uh, Saan yun? Historicists. Ayan. Pag-aaralan natin nila yung kaya yan. Ayan ang ginamit nilang uh, approach sa pag-unawa sa revelation. At dahil dyan sa approach niya, nakita nila itong uh, kalaban nilang uh, pinag-protesta nila ng Roman Catholic Church. Ito yung mga one. Outside Christ. Ngayon, ang ginawa ng Roman Catholic itong isang theologian niya, si Alcazar, nag-device siya ng, one, ng system of interpreting uh, revelation para ma-divert yung one, yung uh, claim ng mga uh, uh, protestants na ang Pope ang one at So this, this uh, system of interpreting, it has a very one, uh, sabihin natin specific purpose. Ang purpose nito, para i-divert ang buwan. Ang uh, paniniwala ng marami na ang Pope ang Antichrist. Yun ang purpose nito. 
Okay. Uh, one weakness of this view is its interpretation of Jesus' second coming as a spiritual and not literal. It's contradicts Jesus' own description of his coming in Matthew. Right. <coughs> Very visible and one, the second coming. Uh, kung paano raw ang kidlat, nakikita, nasa sila nga, nasa kamura, ganun ang pagdating niya. Anang na tao. Kung makikita, visible. Tapos, merong futurist. <coughs> this teaches that events in Revelation 4 to 22 will occur in the future. So, 1 to 3 lang ang 1 na fulfill ng panahon ng mga loudest ng mga seven churches. Yun lang daw, 1 to 3. Right? Yung 4 to 22 will occur in the future. Futurists divide Revelation into three sections as indicated by Revelation 1.19. What you have seen, past, obviously. What is now and what will take place later. And chapter 1 describes the past, what you have seen. Chapters 2 to 3 describe the present, what is now. And the rest of the book describes future events, what will take place later. Futurists apply a literal approach to interpreting Revelation. Chapter 4 to 9 refers to a period known as the seven-year tribulation period. Future ito, ah, corresponding to Daniel 9.27. During this time, God's judgments are actually poured upon mankind as they are revealed in seals, trumpets, and bowels. Chapter 13 describes a literal future world empire headed by a political and religious leader represented by the two beasts in Revelation 13. Chapter 17 pictures a harlot who represents the church in apostasy. Chapter 19 refers to Christ's second coming and the battle of Armageddon followed by a literal 1,000 year reign of Christ upon the earth in chapter 20. Chapters 21 to 22 are events that follow the millennium, creation of new heavens and new earth, and the arrival of the city of Jerusalem upon the earth. The futurist view was introduced by another Jesuit priest to counter the Reformation's historic view, which identified the papacy as the Antichrist. Ganon din po ang purpose nito. Bakit ginawa itong system na ito? Para iiwas ang Pope being identified as Antichrist. Okay. Ganito ang one, logic. Eh. Kung ang lahat ng nangyari sa Revelation okay, ay tapos na, magkagawa ko ng konting uh, timeline. Dito na isulat ang Revelation 95-80. Sabihin natin na uh, dito yung one, uh, second coming. Fifteenth or sixteenth century, fifteen and gang pan and gang seventeen. Dito yung kwan, dito yung five hundred thirty eight. Dito ang reign ng ng Pope kay Pasi. Yan ang reign. Ngayon, almost ko na, almost 1800. Itong itong uh, preteris ginawa yan dito sa panahon nito at itong futurist dito rin halos magkasabay silang ginawa dito ang sabi nila yung lahat daw ng uh, nasa revelation, eh tapos na no. eh di pass na ibig sabihin dito na naganap 70 AD actually Ang ibig sabihin, iwas na to. Hindi na ito ang Antichrist. Eh, paano maging Antichrist? Eh, dito pa lang dumating yan. Eh, tapos na lahat. Right? 
yung Revelation 13 na one tungkol sa Antichrist. Tapos na dito. Ang sabi nila, ang Antichrist daw si Nero. Okay, si Hector. <coughs> Ngayon, ito naman, ang sabi niya, si yung uh, futurist, ay hindi. Dito, di ko mangyayari lahat ng kwan. Ng, uh, sa future pa. Sibawa, nandito tayo. Now. So, sabi niya, kung dito, kung totoo itong system nila, futurist, dito lahat mangyayari yan sa panahong ito, eh, di, kung ano naman siya, as, uh, iwas, iwas, iwas na naman siya. Okay. So, itong dalawang kwan na to, itong dalawang school of thought na ito, eh, dinevise yan, dinevelop yan, para iiwas ito. Para iiwas ito na ma-identify na Antichrist. Okay? <coughs> Ngayon, dito tayo sa 1 major problem with futurists is that it renders revelation irrelevant to the original intended readers the seven churches in Asia in the first century eh kung puro future na naman yan uh, kung dito eh, wala, it doesn't help our situation na uh, what nagihirap kami yun, pinaparsecret kami Tapos bibigyan mo kami ng mensahe na doon pa palang, doon pa lang way, way out in the future. At kaya something about uh, things relevant to us today. Okay. <coughs> Another problem is the disregard of the literary rule of hermeneutics in disregarding the apocalyptic language of the book by interpreting it literally. Interpret nila yan literally. 1,000 years is 1,000 years. Okay. Uh, pag sinabing uh, three and a half years, three and a half years, walang kwan. Literally. Yeah. Okay. Pag sinabing there is temple in heaven, the temple in heaven was open, literally yan, temple. Alright. Pagka tayo sa historicist. This view considers Revelation as a symbolic representation of the course of history of the church from the apostle's life, si Apostle John, to the end of the age, consistent with the collaborative witness of scriptures and adheres to the rules of hermeneutics, particularly literary principle and the rule that the Bible interprets itself. This is why we will use the historical approach in this seminar in interpreting Revelation. Gagamitin po natin historicist approach. Okay? <clears throat> However, one major weakness of all four views is their lack of focus on Jesus Christ and His Gospel. Yan po ang kwan. Ang isang weakness ng lahat din ito, historicist. Yung uh, ibang mga historicist, gaya ng uh, second Adventist, na divert, na divert sila. Dahil na wala ang focus nila dito. Napunta sa loob. Yung focus na <coughs> sa loob ni Moses. We will be guided by the main theme of Revelation as the revelation of Jesus Christ. When we will interpret Revelation symbolically, we will do so Christologically as well. Okay? One very important principle that is missed in all four views is the fact that the Bible focuses on Christ, His Gospel, and His people. As in the Old Testament, other nations were mentioned only as they relate to God's people and as they fight against the gospel of Christ. This is the philosophy of history as you will find in the Bible. Ang mababanggit lang ng mga bansa ay yung may kinalaman sa bayan ng Diyos. Yung mga bansa walang kinalaman sa bayan ng Diyos. Hindi na, hindi na pinabanggit. Right? Bakit nabanggit ang Egypt? Eh kasi yung bayan ng Diyos naalipin doon. Bakit na bang git ang Babylon? Eh kasi inalipit din ang Babylon ng bayan ng Diyos, ng Israel. Kaya na ba manggit ang mga bansang ito dahil nagkaroon sila ng kaugnayan sa bayan ng Diyos sa Old Testament sa Israel. Now in Revelation, bababanggit din ang mga bansang ito o ma-identify itong mga bansang ito na tinaan sa symbols dahil meron silang kinalaman sa bayan ng Diyos. At ang bayan ng Diyos natin, sa ngayon, alam natin na ang Iglesia. 
ang bayan ng Diyos. So lahat nito, yung mga countries na uh, in-identify by means of symbols, lahat ito na napan lang, na-identify lang dito dahil meron silang kinalaman sa bayan ng Diyos. Maaari hindi nyo pa pa. Maaari ang China, hindi pa. Dahil uh, wala siyang very kwan, significant impact sa, sa church. Basta kwan, yun lang may significant impact sa church. Yung mga bansa yan ay naisama sa kwan sa prophecy. Okay? <clears throat> yan. May katanungan po kayo bago tayo pumunta talaga sa kwan. Yan, revelation na kwan. Pag-aaralan na natin ngayon. <coughs> May katanungan po kayo bago tayo <coughs> oh, kung wala, tayo po itumuloy. Revelation is a Jewish apocalyptic book that is related to another Jewish apocalyptic book in the Old Testament, the book of Daniel. This relationship is established in Revelation 5 about a little book that is perfectly sealed until the Lamb opened the seven seals. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll. Ang tawag nila, scroll. Kasi yung libro ng Lord. Hindi po ganyan ang ban. Ang basa ng libro nila noon. Hindi ba yung lips. Scroll ang kanilang ban. So nakita niya yung scroll written inside and on the back. Sealed with seven seals. Ngayon. Mag-interpret tayo. Alin itong book na to? Ang tatanong natin. <clears throat> ang sabi ng iba, yun daw Book of Mormon. Sabi ng uh, iba, baka meron pang mag-interpret dito, Quran. Hindi natin na lang. <laughs> Pero, mga interpretation niya, nalabas sa Biblia. Okay? Ang kailangan mo, yung interpretation na nasa Bible because The Bible interprets itself. Okay? So ngayon, ang, ang tanong eh, saan ba sa Biblia merong sealed na book? Daniel. Okay? Wala mo iba, wala kayo ibang makikita na merong pan. Some modern translators use book instead of scroll. A scroll is a book. To know what scroll or book this is, we need to find another scroll or book in the Bible which is sealed. Right? Remember, the Bible interprets itself. The Bible also speaks of a sealed book or scroll in Daniel. <coughs> but you, Daniel, so Daniel 12, 4 and 9, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. And he said, go your way, Daniel. Say it dito sa pagitan ito. Nagiging usap si Daniel. Sabihin mo naman sa akin, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng mga nakita ko? Sabi niyo ba? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Ibig sabihin, hindi maunawaan itong portion ng sinulat na ito ni Daniel hanggang sa time of the end. Hindi yan naunawaan. Hindi yan naunawaan ni Daniel. Hindi yan naunawaan ng mga uh, sumunod na prophet sa kanya. Hindi yan naunawaan hanggang sa ang ating Panginoon Is Kristo ay natapos na yung kanyang uwan. Yung kanyang pagtubos. Mula lang nun. Right? Dahil si Jesus Christ lang daw ang pwedeng magbukas. Uh, naiyak si John dahil kinagilap nila kung sinong maaaring magpagbukas. At wala silang nakitang pwedeng magbukas, worthy na pwedeng magbukas ng seven seals. Pero ang sabi yung angel sa kanya, uh, yung mga creatures, heavenly creatures, huwag kang umiyak. Because the lion of the tribe of Judah uh, has prevailed. He is worthy to open the seals. You know, si Jesus Christ ngayon, siya ang magbukas, siya ang magpapahayag. Okay? <clears throat> The little book or scroll of Revelation 5 is the sealed portion of the book of Daniel. It is in Revelation that the sealed portion of the book of Daniel is unsealed. This means that Revelation explains the unexplained part of the book of Daniel. Therefore, a close and decided relationship exists between Daniel and Revelation. 
Ano yan? Pagka, pagkala ng tao dito, kung magkadikit na pa niyan, libro niyan. Yung hindi na ipaliwanag dito sa Daniel, dito naman ipinaliwanag sa Revelation. At makikita nyo, may mga portion na parang kinuha sa book of Daniel. Tapos, in-explain in detail dito sa what? sa Revelation. Makikita natin yan. The number 7 is a number of perfection in Jewish numerology along with 1, 3, 10, and 12. 6 denotes imperfection in Jewish numerology. 7 seals simply means that the unexplained portion of the book of Daniel is perfectly sealed right, until the time of the end. Ngayon, anin yung time of the end? The time of the end began in the first coming of Jesus Christ, whose days on earth ushered in the last days. Magbabasahin niyo yan. <clears throat> Sabi, in times past, God spoke to our forefathers in various ways at various times through the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. Okay? So, the coming of, the first coming of Jesus Christ on earth marked the beginning of the last days. Okay. So, asahan mo, mula noon, na, sabi ni Daniel, uh, pagtating ng time of the end, knowledge shall increase. Hindi lang yung, one, hindi lang yung uh, technological knowledge, right? scientific knowledge, but yung knowledge sa madalang kasulatan, mag-i-increase. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng angel. Hindi mo kumal pinaliwanag sa inyo ito, pero pagdating ng time of the end, knowledge will increase, maunawaan nila ang ibig sabihin ito. Okay? <coughs> From the time Jesus began to rule as Messianic King, the book of Daniel has been unsealed in Revelation. The opening of the eighth seal ushered in the events that will transpire to explain the unexplained portion of Daniel in relation to God's people and their oppression, oppressors, leading to the main anti-Christ. Kahit na dun sa Juan, may meron ng Juan talaga uh, sinabi doon na maunawaan mo lang pag binasa mo ang apocalypses. Ang hindi pala sabihin doon sa Daniel na tinutukoy niya ay yung anti-Christ. Okay. Dito sa Revelation, na two point. Okay. Ngayon, sa malang kasunatan, ang peace, pagdating sa prophecy, right? peace in, Bible, in the Bible represents political power as opposed to religious power. The biblical times, in biblical times, political powers were kings who were rulers of kingdoms. Peace, therefore, represents a king or a kingdom. Papasahin niyo po yung man. Um, yung siguro, maganda magpasa tayo para makita natin talaga. Daniel 7, 17, 23. Tandaan niyo beasts, right? King yan, at saka kingdom. Sana i-copy-paste yan. Daniel 7? 7, 17, 23. Saka 23 hanggang 23. Isa, pangalawa bro. Ha? Okay. Yan. Yung pangalawa mas mahal. Yan. Basahin natin yan. Yan. These great beasts, which are four, nakita ni Daniel, right, are four kings. Okay. which shall arise out of the earth. Sa 23, dito, kings. Ha? Pagdating sa verse 23, kingdoms naman. Ang sinabi. Yan ang pangalawa. Ang gali 23. Okay. Sa 23 po. Ito. He gave me this explanation. The fourth priest is a fourth kingdom. That will appear on the earth, on earth. Now, <coughs> so, ang beast, political pa niyan, a king and a kingdom. Okay? 
Obviously, yung king, it represents niya yung king niya. Okay? So, a, a, uh, a peace is a political power. Kasama na yung teritoryo niya, kasama niya yung, kuan, ano yung sinasakupan niya. Ito ang ibig sabihin ng peace, political power. Okay, balik tayo dun sa kapan. Okay. Now, represents the king. Now, the feast of Revelation 13 has striking similarities with the fourth feast of Daniel 7. Marami silang characteristics na pareho. Una, both beasts came from the sea. Yan ang mungkan. Mabasahin mo yan. Pareho siya ang galing sa sea. Now, in prophecy, sea or many waters represents populated areas with many peoples, nations, and languages. Pakibasa mo po, Brad. Revelation 17.15. The waters that you see are sabi dyan? Revelation 17.15 so. Then the angel said to me, The waters you saw where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. So biblical prophecy, if if a beast comes out of the sea, ang ibig sabihin, yung, na, yung nation na yun, populated na area na yung one. Right? Civilized na yung area kung saan siya lumabas. Maraming tao. In, in other words, uh, naging prominent siya in power in the middle of one populated uh, area sa civilization. Okay? Tulik po tayo. Importanting makakuha natin yan, isang identify, identifying marks na naman yan. Yeah, uh, okay? This means that this beast aroused from populated areas among nations from center of civilization. Pangalawa, both beasts had ten horns. Yeah. Meron silang man, uh, ten horns, pareho. Beast ng Revelation uh, 13, beast ng Daniel 7, pareho sila. Yung fourth beast ng Daniel 7. In the Bible prophecy, in, in, the, in Bible prophecy, horn represents a king or a kingdom. Yan din po man, na nabasa natin kanina. Right? 23 yung pinasa natin, 24, in-identify na the, the, the horn, the little horn that you saw is a king. Right? <clears throat> so, parehong may 10 horns. Ang yun sabihin, itong mong beast na ito, ay eh, one. May mga sakop na one, 10, 10 kingdoms. Right? <clears throat> Both beasts, became world power. They ruled the whole earth. Yan. Pansin na. World uh, power itong dalawang beast na to. Ng Revelation 13 at saka Revelation at saka Daniel 7. The whole earth. Alright. Both beasts persecuted the saints of God and prevailed against them. Pasahin natin to. Revelation 13, 7. Ito yung mga kwan distinguishing marks na talagang mapipindang mo talaga ito yung pa na yan, ito yung power na yan okay. it was given power yung pa, yung beast it was given power to wage war against God's own people and to conquer them right? and it was given authority over every tribe, people, language and nation sabihin worldwide power ito. Hindi ito isolated na uh, power worldwide ang power ito. Sumakot siya sa lahat ng tao. <coughs> the world empire. Okay? Sa kanya, Revelation 13. 
Revelation. Yung sa Revelation, sa Daniel 7, makikita nyo, pandem, yung buong mundo rin. Ano yung pa natin sa Daniel... Daniel 7.25. 7, Daniel 25. Daniel 7. Para lang mabasa ma ninyo so, talaga ng sarili ng mata ninyo. Okay. Ito yung fourth beast ng Daniel. He will speak against the Most High and oppress His holy people. People and try to change the set times and the laws. Isa pang palatandaan niya. Change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hand for a time, times, and a half time. Sa so, interpretation ng one, mula sa Greek, time is one year, times is two years, and a half time is half a year. Okay? So, tandaan niyo, three and a half years yan. <coughs> so, both persecuted the saints of God and prevailed against them. Talagang one, natalo niya, natalo niya yung one, yung saints. Napatay niya, pinersecute niya, marami siya napatay. Okay? Now, both beasts, Revelation 13 beast at saka yung fourth beast ng Daniel 7, Persecuted the saints of God for the same period of time. Dito sa Revelation 13, ang ginamit 42 months. Right? Using the Jewish calendar, 360 days per year. Right? 42 months, 12 months sa uh, buwan. 12 months in a year. Right? So, kung ito, 42 months, is 3 and a half years. All three and a half years naman ang gamit sa Daniel. The Bible prophecy, as, con as context demands, one prophetic day is equal to one literal year. And po yung mga uh, text, proof text, right? I have given you one year, uh, one day for a year. Which means both these persecuted the saints for 1,260 years. Yung Beast ng Daniel 7, fourth beast ng Daniel 7, at yung beast ng Revelation 13, they persecuted the saints of God for 1,260 years. And, nag-prevail, right? Na talagang nahapan nila, nasalanta nila ang buwan, bayan ng Diyos. Now, with these very striking similarities, the conclusion is inevitable. The beast of Revelation 13, Fourth beast of Daniel 7 are one and the same beast. Mm. <laughs> Comparing their uh, one characteristics, yung beast ng Daniel 7, yung fourth beast, at saka yung beast ng Revelation 13 ay iisa. The fourth beast of Daniel 7 is easily identified as the fourth world empire that ruled the whole earth. Rob rule. Sa Daniel, in-identify in yan. Hindi yung pangalan niya. Kundi yung mga nauna, in-identify. Right? Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece. Identify dyan sa pan. Bakit hindi na-identify ang Rob? Kasi hindi na buhay si Daniel sa panahon na ng Rob. <laughs> si, si, si Daniel na buhay sa panahon ng Medo-Persia, na buhay sa Babylon, Ang Babylon nga ang pan eh, ang uh, nag-exile sa kanila eh. Ay, kaya siya napunta sa, pan, sa Babylon, sa Iraq dahil uh, in-exile siya. Ang ginawa ni Nabokadnesar, yung king ng Babylon, na sumalakta sa pan, sumalakay sa uh, Judea, lahat ng matatalino at kiluhan niya para pakinabangan ng kingdom. Inuha niya, inala niya doon sa palas. <clears throat> yung uh, mga pan, mga skilled na uh, workers, inala niya. Right. Mga pang din, mga utak din. Na brain drain tuloy yung pan, yung diya. 
sa very simple one uh, very simple presentation ng mga world powers na darating okay yung susunod na vision medyo pa ma mar mas maraming detail kaysa dito sa nauna na. yung sumunod mas marami pang detail kumbaga yung sa nang grade 1 nang grade 2 nang grade 3 madami ang kwan na nalalaman. Okay. Ganyan ang kwan. Mahusay na kwan. Pero magturo talaga ang Panginoon. Okay. Isang ka sa kwan, madali mong maunawaan. Tapos, mahirap kira. Ito. Magaling unawain ito. Nabala, nabasa niyo ba yung Daniel 2? Okay. <coughs> sa Daniel 2, na naginip yung si King Nebuchadnezzar, ang hirap no, napanag, yung napanaginipan niya, nakalimutan niya. <laughs> at dahil nakalimutan niya actually pinakalimut ng lumipan yun eh Diyos sa kanya para magkaroon ng papil si David <laughs> upaan ka rin natin ang buwan dahil nasa pa naman ito nasa uh, plan of redemption ito eh kinutrol talaga ng Diyos yung buwan yung sitwasyon dito Yes. Ang pinairal niya dito, sovereign will. Right? As opposed to permissive will. Yung sovereign will, ito talagang plinano ng Diyos. Pag plinano niya yan, walang kwan, walang sino mang makataharan yan. Wala, kahit na sino. <coughs> Satan may try to prostrate it, he will not succeed. Ganyan ang nangyari dito. So, na naginip, nakalimutan niya. At ang hirap nun, dahil na, 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 na naginip siya at nakalimutan niya, nabagabag itong hari. At kahit na anong gawin niya, hindi niya maalala. So, una, ang uh, pinuntahan niya, yung mga pa, niya, magicians niya, mga sorcerers niya, yung uh, sarili niya religion, yung pinuntahan niya. O, oh, siguro sabi niya gano'n. Sabi niya gano'n. Time. Time niyo na to. Ah, magpapasikat kayo sa akin. Ano po yun? Uh, king. Na naginip ako. Gusto ko malaman ng buwan, ang interpretation. Ah, sabihin niyo, King. Ang iyong panaginip. Maraming i-interpret sa inyo. Nakakalimutan ko nga. <laughs> so, ang gagawin niyo ngayon, sabi ng King, Ipapaalaala niyo sa akin kung ano yung ibig At pagkatapos, i-interpret ninyo kung ano yung ibig sabihin. Ay, boss, kina. Ba, eh, nagreklamo ito. King, walang makakakuan yan. Sabihin mo sa amin kung ano yung pinapaniganipan mo, i-interpret namin. Pero hindi namin pwedeng guwan. Sabihin kung ano yung napanaginipan mo. Sabi ko, walang makakapang sa iyo. Makakasabi, makakasabi uh, sa iyo kung ano yung napanaginipan mo. Sabi na, siguro nito nga rin. Mga kwan pala kayo eh. Ito ang loko-loko rin sa kwan ako eh. Sabi niya gano'n, lahat ng mga kwan, lahat ng mga sorcerers, lahat ng mga priests sa kingdom niya, papatayin! Lahat ng wise men, papatayin. Aba, hindi eh, ang nangyayari niya, madadamay si na Daniel dahil kasama siya sa kwan, tinaguri ang wise men. Okay. Ang ginawa ni Daniel, 
mo ka siya sa hari. Sabi niya, bakit ano, napaka panata nitong ano, decree? Napaka uh, harsh. harsh. <laughs> May pit at saka ako. Sabi niya, ganun. Ayan mo, parang uh, I'm just, uh, pan ha? Uh, ako po yung uh, Reconstruction, historical <laughs> reconstruction ng mababasa niyo sa Daniel. Iyan <clears throat> mo ng time. Nanalangin ako sa aking Diyos. Sabi niya ganun, dahil ang Diyos ko, nahihahayag niya yung mga lihim na bagay. Iyan mo akong manalangin pagkatapos babalikan mo ito. Sabi niya, nga ginawa ni Daniel. Manalangin si Daniel sa, uh, sa Diyos pinakita rin ang Diyos sa kanya kung ano yung napanaginipan ni, ni Nabucodonosor ni Nabucodonosor so oh, pagkatapos doon, punta na siya o oh, king, sabi niya ganoon gusto kong malaman mo na there is God in heaven sabi niya ganoon, who reveals secrets yes. <coughs> hindi nakakalimutan ni Daniel na kwan, hindi niya sinabing oh, ako ang wisest dito eh. <laughs> Ibinigay niya talaga ang, ang uh, puri sa ating Panginoon. Okay? Sabi ni Daniel na nag-inip ka ng isang nakakakilabot na na pan, uh, image. Sabi niya ganoon. Ang ulo ay ginto. Ang kanyang dibdib at ang arms niya, silver. At ang kanyang torso, ito, right, is bronze. Right? Hanggang, hanggang dito. Yan. At ang kanyang legs ay iron. Sabi niya gano'n. At yung paa niya, saka mga daliri, ay eh magkasamang putik, clay, at saka iron. At habang nakita mong nakatayo, sabi niya gano'n, merong isang bato, sabi niya gano'n, na tumama sa paanan ng rebulto. At ang rebulto ay nagkapira-piraso. At yung batong yun, na walang pinanggalingan, na a stone cut out without hands. Sabi. Right? At tumama dyan. Yung batong yun, sabi niya gano'n, ay lumaki at lumaganap at pinuno ang buong mundo. Yun ang panaginip niya. Natural, naalala na itong... Yun nga! Sakto! Sakto! Yun nga! Pakaalala na niya. Eto ay ang sabihin niyan. Sabi niya gano'n. Ikaw, may 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 pabulatsing pa dun sa one. You, O King! You are a King of Kings. Hindi naman the King of Kings. You are a King of Kings. And God in Heaven, sabi niya gano'n, has entrusted everything to you. Mula sa tao, birds, animals, lahat, sabi niya gano'n, ipinagkatiwala sa iyo para, pa, para pagharihan mo. At sabi niya, you are the gold, the head of gold. So, ang gold dito, Babylon. You are the head of gold. What? After you will come a kingdom inferior to you. Kung paano ang gold, right? mas matimbang kaysa silver at silver inferior sa gold ganoon din ang susunod na kingdom sabi niya may darating na kingdom na inferior sa iyo and a third kingdom will come and a fourth kingdom will come pagkatapos nito sabi niya ganoon merong kingdom na darating na sisirain lahat ito at yun ang kingdom ng Diyos okay at maghahari sa buong sandibutan ang kingdom ng Diyos. So, now, nawaan ito. Hindi nang, ako, oh, makag nasar. Uh, so, pang, uh, pinagbunhi si, what, si Daniel. Uh, pinigyan siya ng one reward. Uh, ginawa siyang uh, mataas sa kanya. Sa kanyang uh, uh, naging third in command yata si, what, si Daniel sa kingdom ni Nabuket Nasar. Alright, so, yung susunod na kingdom, medyo Persia. Right? Tapos, Grisha. Itong tatlong ito, pinangalanan. Nasa kontrabihan, nasa Daniel. Right? Pinangalanan yung medyo Persia. At pinangalanan yung Grisha. Itong medyo Persia, <coughs> inabot yan. Daniel. 
Ang uh, uh, ang last na <coughs> ang last na king na pinagsilbihan ni Daniel ay king ay king dito. Si Darius. <coughs> Siya yung kwan, naging malapit na kaibigan ni Daniel na nagpatapon sa kanya sa den of lion, lion's den against sa will niya. Okay? Kaya lang uh, medyo nilansilan si Sean ng mga <coughs> mga sidekicks niya. Napapirma siya ng uh, isang decree na sa lahat, sa buong kingdom niya walang mananalangin sa ibang Diyos maliban sa kanya. Medyo na pop up yung pride niya. Okay. Pinirma niya. Hindi niya alam, itong si Daniel na kaibigan niya, na nanalangin ito ng three times a day. Okay. Being a duty. At pagka nananalangin siya, pinubuksan niya yung guan. Yung bintana. Pumaharap siya sa Jerusalem. Ito na po ang mga Alam nung mga kalaban niya, nung nagpagawa ng kwan, ng edik sa king, alam nila na gano'n ang promise niya. Kaya nung kwan ba, Nung time na niyang manalangin, eh, ito na yung kikita nila, binuksan na yung kikita, tapos na doon lang. Subong ka agad. O King, live forever. Hindi ba inuutos mo na sa loob ng isang buwan, walang sino mang tatawag sa ibang Diyos, maliban sa iyo? Oo. Sabi niya ganun. Bakit? Sabi niya. Yung si Daniel, sabi niya ganun. Nakita namin, tumatawag siya sa ibang Diyos. Nakabukas pa yung pinkwan niya. Yung kanyang pintana. Uh, Tinawag ng hari si Daniel, totoo ba? Totoo. Okay, wala. May laka, ano eh. Y yun ang tinatawag nila pagka sinelyo ka na ng, ng king. Yung kanyang utos. Ang utos ng hari, hindi na babali. And, And, and the king struggled to save David at uh, Daniel. Yeah. Mm. Kaya alam, talagang merong man. Meron siyang pinilmahan na, na may seal pa na. Pero sinabihan niya si Daniel, I hope you're, the God you serve will save you. Okay. Hindi nakatulog yung hari. Palagay ko si Daniel, nakatulog eh. Oh, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Baka ginawa pa niya kunan yung uh, <laughs> Leo. Ginawa niya kama. Madaling araw pa lang. Ito na yung hari. Sinita pa siya doon sa cave. Daniel! Yung bang Diyos na pinagbiling pa rin mo, ay iniligtas ka ba? Opo, mahal na hari. Oo, yun. Mahal na labas na. Labas. Yung lahat ng nag-unite uh, para gawin yung, yung decree na yun, <laughs> yun ang pinatapon. <laughs> At sigurado nga, nala pa ng TNP. <laughs> okay, so panahon yan dito. Itong Grecia, wala, uh, pumapapil na. Ang katotohanan yan, si De minsan na nanangin si Juan, si Daniel, na delay si Gabriel from the table. For 21 days, ang sabi ni Gabriel, for 21 days, I shall be struggling with the, uh, with the king of Asia. Okay. Alam niyo kung Yung mga leaders niya. Kung yan? Uh, may mga pantay na angels yan. So, messengers galing sa Diyos. Nakikipan sila, nakikistruggle sila. Bawa, may importante yung desisyon, lalo na yung mga desisyon na uh, ma-apektuhan ng bayan ng Diyos. Ba't sila? Uh, binabantayan nila yan. Si Trump, baka kung ilang angel yan. Kaya... <laughs> <laughs> may bitch na yun. <laughs> <laughs> kung 
ilang angels ang nagbabantay para yung wal, yung decision niya, lalo na yung makakaapekto sa, sa bayan ng Diyos, eh, may ayos. Pero meron talagang matitigas ang wal. Matitigas ang ulo sa mga kids. So, yung nahirapan siya. Sabi ni Juan, 21 days ako nagpagbunod dun sa mga Christian. So, alam na alam ni Kwan ito na ito ang susunod. Alam ni Daniel. Dahil na, na pala niya ito eh. Nakita niya yung fulfillment nito. Ngayon, pagamat hindi hindi tinukoy yung pangalan mismong Rome. Right? Sa book of Daniel. Ang susunod na world and wire ay Rome. Rome ang tumalo sa Greek. Sa Greek. Noong 168 BC, in the Battle of Arbella, natalo ng Rome ang Chris. At mula dito sa panahon ito, naghari na ang Chris. Ang ang Rome. Ito yung pinatawag na Fourth Kingdom ng Daniel 7. Fourth Kingdom. One, two, three, four. Ito rin yung beast Revelation. Right? Pero, pero tayo dapat na malaman dito. The Roman Empire had two faces. <coughs> the pagan Rome, 168 BC, and then 476. <coughs> Nung mag-fall ang buwan, yung uh, Roman Empire. At sa kapapang Rome, from 538 AD to 1798 AD. The period 477 AD to 537 AD, was a transition period wherein the Pope has a steady gain, steady, steadily gained prominence. In 538 AD, Bishop of Rome was declared by Emperor Justinian as the head of all Christendom. Actually, 533 pa lang, biniklare na ni Emperor Justinian na head of all Christendom ang Rome. Kaya lang, mayroon pang mga, pan, mga nagre-rebelde. Right? And the last one to rebel, yung pinatawag nilang Visigoths. Right? Yun ang huli na na, na, na talo ng uh, Rome. Okay? And when the Visigoths were, one, were defeated by uh, Rome, ang, uh, ang Pope na naging one, uh, powerful. He was more powerful than the kings kasi siya ang nag ng mga kings. Pag hindi niya inanoid, hindi yan magiging king. So, in effect, he was uh, he was actually the ruler of these uh, kings. Uh, there was one uh, true story ito nangyari sa France. Merong sinabi yung uh, one, yung crown prince ng France which offended the Pope, the Pope in Rome. So that by the time na mag ascend na itong buwan sa throne, yung crown prince. Sabi ng Pope, I won't anoint him as king. Unless, sabi niya ganun, lumakad siya mula sa France by foot hanggang dito sa Rome. Pagdating dito, sabi niya, umalik siya sa aking paa. Kaya anoint siya siyang king. At yun ang ginawa nung pala yun. Nag-travel siya from France to Italy, sa Sassaro, to kiss the Iban, to the feet of uh, the Pope. At dahil doon, na Iban, uh, inanoin siya as king. So, makikita mo yung power niya. Ahawak niya. Ahawak niya talaga yung mga kings. Yung panahon niya. <laughs> okay? So, siya ang Iban. Virtually, in effect, he was a political power yung uh, papal rope. <clears throat> now let us go back to Revelation 13 to find out more about the beast. At the beast. Then I stood on the sun of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. Makikita ninyo, itong leopard na ito, Eto yung one. Eto yung kumakatawan sa Greece. Yung lion, kumakatawan yan sa Babylon. Doon sa 
uh, one, Revelation uh, 7. Ah, sorry, Daniel 7. Tapos sinabi niya naman, Leopard, his feet were like a bear. Right? Yan ang buwan, kumakatawa sa Red Persia. And his mouth is like the mouth of a lion. Kumakatawa sa Babylon. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads. Seven heads yan eh. Right? Seven heads and ten horns. One of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded. And his deadly wound was healed. So, an ano itong heads na ito? Right? Again, this is a piece. Ibig sabihin ito, yung head, may kingdom, mga kingdoms din yan. At yung mga horns, kingdoms din yan. Ibig sabihin, maraming kwan itong sakop ng beast na ito. Right? Ano yung seven heads ng beast? Ito yung seven world empires na na-accumulate niya lahat yung kwan, yung power, na-accumulate niya pati yung mga characteristics niya ng mga beast na nauna sa kanya kauna-unahan na world empire na nasa Biblia. Okay, nasa Bible ito. Ito, uh, hinulangan kung saan. Ang una, Egypt. Okay? <coughs> Ang pangalawa, Assyria. Napabasa nyo yan. Okay? Ang pangatlo, Babylon. Ang pangapat, Middle Persia. Ang panglima, Greece. Okay? Ang panganim, Pagan Rome. Ang pampito, Papal Rome. Pito yan. Right. Yan ang kwan. Yan ang mga uh, nasa nasa five heads. O nasa yung five heads o seven heads na nasa beast. Okay? At may karakteristiks yan nung lahat ng yun. Okay. Ngayon, ito ang sabi dito, I saw one of the heads as if it had been mortally wounded. And his deadly wound was healed. Ang tanong, alin sa heads na yun ang kasugatan? Na parang sugat na ipamamatay. <clears throat> and all the world marveled and followed the beast na umaling, na nakasugat at umaling. So they worshiped the dragon and he made, who gave authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, Who is like the beast? who is able to make war with him. In Revelation, the beast is shown as having the characteristics of all the world empires before it. The seven empires represented by the seven heads are uh, of the beast. Well, yeah. The head that was wounded with a deadly wound was papal Rome. Okay? Why? Okay. <laughs> documented yan, documented to yan. Yung 1,000, yung 42 months, i-multiply mo yon ng 30, that is 30 days per month, 1,216 ang lalabas. Okay? Yung 3 and a half years, multiply by 360 using the, cal the Jewish calendar, 360 days a year lang sila. Okay. Jewish uh, apocalyptic story. Okay? So, gagamitin mo yung Jewish calendar. Yung three and a half years, yan din ang buwan. Yan din ang bilang ng days. Yes. Okay? Ay, tanong yung buwan. Gawin nyo. Multiply. Matix. Kompleto itong buwan natin. 42 months. Right? 42 months. Multiply mo ito ng 30. Right? 30 days. 1,260 days. 3.5 Zero, zero, six, zero, six, 
So these are the same periods expressed in different uh, one, in different time uh, time units. Okay. Yeah. Kailan ako umpisa na naghari ang Rome? Umpisa ang maghari ang Rome 5:38 AD when the Ostrogoths abandoned their seats of Rome, and this left the Bishop of Rome to exercise the prerogatives of the Justinian decree of 5:33 AD. The power and the authority of the papacy grew and grew and grew, starting from that. Exactly 1,200 years later, the papacy suffered its death, death blow. The spectacular victories of the armies of Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte, in Italy, placed the Pope at the mercy of the French revolutionary government. It's now advised that the Roman religion would always be a persistent enemy of the Republic. The government urged Napoleon to destroy the center of unity of the Roman Church, and Napoleon did just that. In 1798, the French General Berthier, with the French army, marched into Rome and proclaimed the political rule of the papacy at an end and took the Pope prisoner. The Pope was removed to France, where he died in exile. The 1260 year rule of papacy was finished. <coughs> As prophesied, both in Daniel and in Revelation. Okay? <clears throat> Wala pong ibang one, walang ibang world power. Pinag-usapan na ito, world power. Hindi yung eh, sariling bansa niya lang ang buwan, ang nasakop niya, hindi yung uh, Asia lang. O kaya, no, this is a world power. Ito lang pong uh, <coughs> papacy yung papal room, ang pwedeng tumugma dito sa nangyari ito. Fulfillment of prophecy can only be fully understood at hindsight. Pagka natupad na, at saka mo lang malalaman, oh, ano pala. Okay. To the reformers of the 16th century, there was no doubt in their minds that papal room was and is the antichrist. <coughs> Gospel of salvation in Christ has been corrupted and turned into a subtle salvation works. Kung mapapag-aralan nyo lang po ang one, ang Roman Catholic Doctrine and Salvation, ginagamit niya lahat ng biblical terminologies, grace, justification, yes. uh, righteousness. Yes. Uh, ginagamit niya lahat yan, but binigyan niya ng totally different meanings. So, kung yan, corruption yan ang one, ng uh, Gospel of Jesus Christ. Wala pong ibang world power na nag-corrupt. Walang iba na nag-corrupt sa gospel sa ating Panginoon sa Cristo. The world power maliban sa paper. Okay. Ngayon, the specifications of prophecies have been astonishingly fulfilled to the very letter. The time frame, the activities against God, and his people. Natatanda nyo sa Daniel, nabasa natin kanina, yung, yung fourth power na yun, fourth uh, uh, beast, ang sabi, he will change times and laws. Sino ba nagbago ng kalendari natin? Si Greg of Gregory. Tinupad niya yun. Kaya nagbago yung measuring natin ng time. <coughs> Naging PC, AD. But during that time na wala pang buwan, wala, hindi pa binabago ni Pope Gregory, may kanya-kanyang kalendaryo o mga malalaking bansa. Kaya lang, kinol niya. Na-unify niya lahat. Ito ang kalendaryo ng gagamitin. Okay. <coughs> he will change times and laws. A Roman Catholic Church then, ang at iisang talagang <coughs> cleaning niya. We have transferred the sanctity of the Sabbath day, the Sabbath uh, command, from Saturday to Sunday. 
without any scriptural basis. Claim nila yan. O yan, official. Official claim yan. Nababasa niya yan. So, natupad niya yung one. Natupad niya yung uh, specification ng prophecy sa Daniel at saka sa Revelation. Ngayon, eto ang one. Pati hindi. Ang sabi, the activities, there is no other world power that has fulfilled these predictions except Papal Rome. We are now in the fulfillment of that part of the prophecy wherein the deadly wound has been healing. Papal Rome, with the help of another political power, the beast from the earth of Revelation 13, will regain world power once again and again fight against God and his people in the last attempt of Satan in his rebellion against God. <clears throat> hanap ng hanap ang mga Kristiyano ng Antichrist. Naghahanap sila at hinihintay nila ano sa mga manggagaling yan. Magagaling ba yan sa Pan Arbol? Magagaling ba yan sa Pan sa Israel? Saan ano magagaling yan? Alam niyo alam niyo ba na kung bakit eh, naghahanap tayo ng ibang Antichrist ngayon? Because we have departed from the, the uh, beliefs of the Reformation. <clears throat> ang reformers, mga reformers, ang 16th century Reformation ng uh, Martin Luther, that was, that was the next greatest the great revival after the Pentecost in Acts 2. Ang sumunod na parang Acts 2 ang buwan Reformation ng 16th century. Nag-upisa yan, uh, min minamarka nila 1517, October 31, 1517, nung ipaskil ni Martin Luther yung 95 thesis niya sa kanya simbahan. 95 na thesis hinahamon niya kahit na sino mula sa Pope hanggang sa kwan, mga cardinals hinahamon niya sino kung sino ang gustong magpag-debate sa kanya dito sa 95 issues na ito na nakita niya na mga paniniwala ng mga uh, Catholics na hindi sangayon sa Biblia <coughs> And that was the one, that was the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. Last uh, one, last year, October 31, was in Daniel year of the Reformation. Kaya ang daming one, maraming mga activities, mga Protestant churches. Because last year marked the 500 years of protest against the Roman Catholic Church. Who the reformers identified as the Antichrist. Ngayon, bakit yung mga Kristiyano ngayon naghahanap ng ibang Antichrist? At sabi rito, gagaling. Gagaling yung sugat niya. At ngayon, magaling na. Kahit saan siya pumunta ngayon, kahit saan, kahit ng non-Catholic na kwan, na bansa, tinudumog siya. Magaling na. Hindi lang sa kwan, sa mga Catholic kwan, uh, kahit saan siya magpunta, tinudumog siya. Isipin mo, magpunta siya sa, sa US eh, dudumogin siya eh. Kaya na kung, kaya mamaya, titignan natin, nasa prophecy ng US. Kaya na ako, nagkaroon ng U.S. dahil pinarsecute ng, ng Pope ang Juan, mga Kristiyano. Nagtakbuhan sa, man, sa U.S. Eh, hindi nila alam na may U.S. Right? May, uh, hindi nila alam yan. Basta makaalis lang sila sa, man, sa Europe. Dahil sakop ng Juan yan, eh. sakop ng, uh, ng uh, Pope ang Juan, ang buong Europe. Makatakas lang sila. Hindi nila alam kung saan sila pupunta. But then, 
the Lord guided them dun sa tinatawag nilang new world. Na ngayon, ay tawag natin United States of America. Ang mga nagsettle, unang nagsettle doon, ay of course, uh, the Red Indians were there. But they were very few. Okay? At mga primitive uh, ones, uh, na mga tao, yung civilization ng Europe, hindi one hindi pa umabot sa kanila. Okay. Nung dumating yung mga yung nagbabasa sa inyo ng church history, yung mga kung tawagin na pilgrims uh, one fathers. Yun yung mga tumatas sa persecution sa Europe, persecution ng po. Pumunta sila. Hindi nila alam kung man, kung saan sila, basta man, layag lang. Kung saan, kung saan uh, lupa sila umabot. Kung sila, eh, ginahit sila ng iban ng Diyos inihatid sila sa iyo sa shores ng uh, New World ang tawag din na doon, New World doon sila nagsettle kaya sa Japan kaya sa US at saka sa Canada merong mga French merong mga Germans may mga Irish okay? merong mga Italians galing yan sa lahat sa Europe na nag-migrate sila right, para kwan, maiwasan lang yung persecution. Walang pinag-iba yan sa, kwan, sa mga kwan na yun. Uh, refugees. Kahit na mamatay sila sa dagat, matatakasan nila yung kanila, yung uh, bansa nila na kwan, inaapi sila o kung walang kwan. <coughs> Hindi baling mamatay na sila. Ganon din sa mga uh, mga unang Kristiyano, hindi na baling mamatay tayo. Mamatay tayo sa uh, sa uh, dagat. So be it. Huwag lang nila isuko yung uh, yung talagang yung faith nila. Hindi nila isusuko. Okay. Naakwa nila. Naalaman na nila yung uh, dahil sa mga reformers, professional reformers, naalaman nila kung ano yung tunay na ibang helo. And they would rather die. Kaya lang, sa ayon sa prophecy, may inihanda ang Diyos na lugar para sa kanila. Yun nga ang ba? Ang United States. Ngayon. Ito. Itong one. We'll regain world power once again and fight against who is this beast from the earth? Natadam na niyo yung one. Yung uh, beast. Yung purple beast from the sea. Ibig sabihin, nanggaling yung papal rope sa karamihan ng tao. Eh, establish yun. Yan ang lado na center of civilization. Yung rope. Diyan, what? Diyan, lumabas. Uh, yung paper rope. Ito namang bis na ito, from the earth. Let us see this thing sing characteristic of this bis. Let's read Revelation 13. Unlike the first beast, which came out from the sea, this other beast came out up of the earth, indicating a wilderness, an unpopulated area, not the center of its civilization. This means this nation would rise up out of unpopulated area, out of no civilization. This beast was like a lamb at the beginning of its existence but would later be a dragon. This is a nation having lamb-like character at first, but would later be an oppressive nation. This beast would be a religious nation who would perform miracles by means of a spiritual power represented by fire from heaven. Ah, that's the problem. Okay, on. Palik tayo sa kan. Sa Bible tayo ngayon. Right? Revelation 13. Isa-isahin natin ito. Intermission? <coughs> ano? Gusto niyo mag-intermission? Intermission mo muna. <coughs> Intermission muna. Intermission mo na. Intermission <laughs> 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 
Intermission daw. Uminom, pwede ko. Kumadak lang ito ko ng kanin, parang di ako... Somehow, although many, many leaders are consulting with the one, with the Pope, not all, okay, hindi pa lahat, so, hindi pa siya completely him, hindi pa, hindi pa lahat na pa, nasa sapot niya, no? So, itong type na ito, na sinasabing, it exercised all the authority of the first beast, wala pa yan. Okay? Kung sino man ito, later on na-identify natin, hindi pa niya in-exercise ang authority ng first beast. Okay? At hindi pa niya pinipilit na mag-worship, made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast. Hindi pa. Okay? Hindi pa ginagawa ito ng power na to sa ngayon. Dahil hindi pa healed completely ang, ang beast. Ngayon, paano niya gagawin na matulungan itong, one, itong beast na to Yung first beast. And it performed great signs. Nagmimilagro itong one na to Itong uh, second beast na to Gumagawa siya ng mga miracle signs and wonders. Okay? <coughs> Even causing fire to come down, to come down from heaven. <coughs> Even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Ngayon, sa literal na, pan, na pagbasa nito, parang... Elijah lang ang kwan, ang peg. Hihingihan ang kwan, ang fire from heaven. Umagsak yung fire from heaven. Kinonsume yung kwan niya. Yung kanyang sacrifice. Hindi ito literal dahil yung kwan ito eh. Apokaliptik ito. Sa apokaliptik kwan, understanding, yung fire simbol niya ng spirit. Okay. So, ito ang kwan, ala Pentecost, right? na bumaba yung kwan, uh, mga tongues of fire sa kanila. Ang ibig sabihin nito, isa itong religious kwan, nation, na gumagawa ng mga miracle signs and wonders. Ang totoo niyan, nakikita na natin ng kwan, beginning niya. Right? America is known for one for these kinds of uh, one, groups, yung uh, miracle signs and wonders. Okay. <clears throat> the second beast, as uh, because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered <laughs> them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Okay. Ngayon, ano itong image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived? <coughs> One characteristic, peculiar characteristic of the beast is it combined political power and religious power in one. Ibig sabihin, yung political uh, power, siya rin yung religious power. Gaya ng beast, gaya ng papal Rome. Ang papal Rome, political power siya. Right? But at the same time, it's a religious power. In other words, he combined the powers of the state and of the church. Pinagsama niya. Right? Yan ang one. Yan ang uh, karakteristik ng one. Ng beast. Yan ang one niya. Yan ang porte niya. Right? <coughs> Hindi mo naman mapapasunod kung ikaw ang uh, head ng religion. Hindi mo mapapasunod ang mga tao without the support of the state, army. Okay. Gusto mong pwersahin yan, pasunod mo yan, pasunod mo ng religion mo, <coughs> kailangan mo ang one, political power. 
And that's exactly what the uh, uh, Paper Rome did. Paper Rome had its own armies. Na talaga sinusubo niya. Pag may nakita siyang mga dissenters, uh, isang bansa na ayaw mong pasakot sa rami na rin, he sent his armies. Kasi ang, ang ginagamit niyang verse sa banal na kasulatan, yung sinabi ni Jesus Christ, uh, nung, nung mag-imbita ang hari, right? nag-imbita siya. Yung mga unang na-imbitahan, hindi pinansin. Yung mga royal king. So nung kwan, nagpa-imbita uh, siya sa mga high, uh, highways and byways, mga iski-iskinita. Sabi ni nung hari, compel them to come. Uh, ibig sabihin, binitin niyo silang, kaya ganun ang buwan, ginawa ng uh, Bible room. Talagang namimilit sila. Pumunta sa Pilipinas, o, pinili tayo, uh, pasunurin doon sa religion na gusto nila. <coughs> I remember an, uh, a, a true story dun sa South America. May mga uh, yung mga unang conquistador na pinadala dun para i-propagate ang kwan. Roman Catholicism. <coughs> Kinoon nila. Binisplace nila yung mga tao. Tsaka yung mga kings nila na pinagpapatay nila. There was one king who was caught at dinala dun sa isang conquistador. At sabi ng conquistador, Spanish conquistador, bibigyan pa kita ng isang one, pagkakataon para hindi, hindi ka mamatay, para hindi kita patay. Accept Christianity, accept our God, and I will spare you. And then, you will go to heaven. Sabi nung king, I don't want to meet your God. <laughs> Sabi niya nung diretso, I don't want to meet your God. Sabi niya ganun. Such a cruel God does not deserve my loyalty. Pinugutan. <clears throat> Ibig sabihin, talagang kwan ito, propagation by the sword. <laughs> ginawa na ng, uh, ng paper rolls. Okay? And this is on record. Pag sigayasat kayo sa kwan, internet, right? google ninyo. Historians estimate paper rolls have killed more than 50 million Christians during its 1,000 uh, 1, year rule. 50 million. Sipin mo yun? Wala ka na kingan si Hitler. Wala ka na kingan si Hitler. 6 million Jews. Ano? Peanuts. So, kung talaga, naging persecuting power talaga. Ang uh, Now, maaaring ba? Ilan tingnan sa inyo, hindi nyo alam to. Pero kung okay. ano? Merong very bad uh, kwan, history ang Christianity dahil sa reign ng paper room. Very bad. Yung uh, kwan na lang eh, yung crusades na lang eh. Ito, yung babanggitin sa itong crusade dahil merong bad uh, kwan yan. Yung connotation sa mga eh. Uh, yan yung war ng kwan, ng uh, Polish against the Muslims. To drive them out of kwan, Jerusalem. Yung Inquisition, Spanish Inquisition, uh, pa niyan, na, nasa Google niyan, pwede niyong ba? The Dark Ages. So, paano ang ba? Every conceivable ba? Torture uh, instrument. Uh, every conceivable torture instrument has been used and in, invented and used by paper room para patayin yung mga kumukontra sa kanya. Okay. So, uh, second
second so ang image ha sa ngayon sabi ko nga sa inyo you not you should not be dogmatic i should not be dogmatic okay and ay kita kong image of the priest ay eh, yung pagsasani ng political power at ng religious power para uh, ikwan itulak ang religious agenda itong power <clears throat> when that when that things when that thing happens to this nation to second beast pagka pinagsama na niya ang one ang uh, church and state o na yan nagform na siya ng one ng image to sa beast to second beast Now, uh, given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that the image could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had a mark which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom that the person who was inside calculate the number of the beast for if it is the number of a man, that number is 666. Now, we heard it earlier. Vicarious Philidae. That is the title of Now, ang ibig sabihin, Philip, uh, Vicarius Philidae, <coughs> ang ibig sabihin po, uh, one, uh, in the place of, right? the son of God. So, ibig sabihin siya ang pumalit sa son of God. Okay? Um, noong Ma malaman, ma-realize ng Juan, ng uh, mga Catholics, lalo na ng mga Cardinales, na pagka sinumatotal mo yung Vicarius Philidae, eh 666 pala ang Juan, suma. Aba, uh, medyo gusto nilang baguhin yung history. Ito raw title na ito, eh hindi naman isinulat sa Juan, sa crown. Wala nga naman nakasulat the Vicarious Philippine. And they were trying to kwan, disown it na kwan lang daw ito, a title given, a forged title given by Constantine to the Pope. Okay? Dahil nakita nila yung kwan, yung connotation eh. Nakita nila. Ma-identify talaga eh. Right? <coughs> Itinan niyo, <coughs> yung salitang B, Carius. Ang ibig sabihin, Vicar of the Vicar of the Son of God. Yung ang ibig sabihin sa English. Vicar of the Son of God. Yung Vicar, kahalili. Okay? Vicarius. Yung U nila, sinusulat nila as B. Tapos, V, Li, Li. Yan ang kwan. Viker of the Son of God. Ito, five. Right? One. This is hundred. Wala. Wala. One. Five. Wala. Wala. One. Fifty. One. One. B is five hundred. E none, and then one. Ito kami po yan. Six five. Six five. Merong representative dito ang Pope. Vicarius 
after this Plus five hundred six 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 in the title na binigay ni Kwanya, ni Constantine. Ito sa title, uh, Kwanya, claim ni Kwanya, 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 Kwanya. Meron pa siyang ita, isang title, Bridge Between Heaven and Earth. Marami siyang titles eh. Maraming titles ang Kwanya. Ang uh, Pope. Uh, meron siyang Kwanya. Meron pa siyang title na parang God of the Underworld, ganyan. Mm. <coughs> Alright. So, ito ang one. Ang sabi, ang sabi po dito, this is this calls for wisdom, let the person who has inside calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Right. Yung gumagamit nitong pangalan na ito is a man. Ayan po ang pan, ginagamit na pangalan. <coughs> so yung identification niya, as far as the Protestant reformers are concerned, wala silang kaduda-duda. Ito yung sinasabi ng Revelation, ito yung sinasabi ng Daniel, na Antichrist. <coughs> na magpe-persecute sa, sa bayan ng Diyos. At walang kwan, wala pong persecuting power na nakapatay more than this power. Nakapatay ng mga Kristiyano, ha? Hindi kwan, hindi non-believers, hindi mga Kristiyano talaga. Yung mga Kristiyano hindi nagpasakop sa kanyang uh, doktrina, yung mga sumalungat, kanya. You can go to uh, kwan, your search engine, type yun yung mga massacres. Kaya nila, massacres. Makikita niyo yung mga Bay Bartolo, San Bartolo, St. Bartolo, yung massacre. <coughs> Kasi, di ba, pagka uh, kinuan yung niring yung kuan, kinalimbang yung kampana, ang uh, kuan, ang mga tao, lumalabas. Pawapunta yan sa kuan, sa simbahan. Kinalimbang niyo yung kuan, Paglabasan yung mga tao. Paglabasan ng mga tao. Ito na yung mga, mga horsemen. Pinagpapatay sila. Isa lang yan sa pan. And thousands sa pan. Good king. Hindi same part of yung masakit. Mga pan yan. Mga protestant na masakit. <coughs> Alright. Ituloy natin. So dito, i-identify natin kung kung uh, alin dito. Itong piece na to. <coughs> Second piece, mula yan sa, kwan, sa unpopulated na area. It had two horns like a lamb. Maamo siya. Mabuot isa siya. Pero later on, magsasalita siya parang dragon. Okay? Now, there is one nation that fits this description. <coughs> it is the United States. Anong one, anong uh, bansa ang mag-fit dito aside from the United States? Ang United States galing siya sa, kung tawagin nilang, New World. Walang tao. Right? Yung mga tao doon, mga ilang nilang lang, yung mga Red Indians, 
na ngayon ay kwan, sobrang minority na yung mga religions dahil uh, kwan eh. <coughs> Pero ito yung mga galing sa kwan, sa Europe, na persecuted na mga kwan, Christians. Ang kanilang uh, kwan, uh, sa constitution nila, nakalagay, <coughs> ang United States is, is a state without a king. And ang church nila separate sa kapan sa state and it is a church without a pope. Kung i-define ninyo ang kwan, ang uh, Republican uh, one, Republican uh, uh, kind of one government, ayan ang kwan, definition nila. A state without a king and a church without a pope. Ang mga nag-draft ng uh, Constitution ng United States, kasama na si George Washington, yung unang presidente, mga kwan talaga yan, devoted na Christians yan. Mga kwan yan, mga uh, persecuted. Right? Although, kung si George Washington, uh, siguro mga third, third generation generation siya. Dahil nag-migrate yung mga yan, mga kwan eh, 17, uh, before 17, mga late 16th century, nag-migrate siya. Uh, the United States was formally uh, made a one union of states, 1776. Okay, at ang unang president si Ivan, he was in George Washington. <coughs> Mga kwan ito, mga anak ng mga persecuted Christians sa iyo. At hanggang nung pan, within a span of 200 years, nakita niyo yung pan, yung uh, ginawa ng Diyos sa pan, sa bayan na yan. And uh, this has a collaborative, this has a collaborative uh, prophecy ito rin sa day ay sa fun, sa revelation let's go to revelation gusto ko lang i-tie ito uh, dito sa revelation 12 <coughs> revelation 12 <coughs> sige po isa natin sa tinali sa verse 7 <clears throat> then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. <clears throat> but he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. Okay? The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. Ang panato, ang panahon na to, during the time na pan, na pag uh, maging pala victorious na si Jesus Christ sa lahat ng enemies, okay? Mm -hmm. Including death. Right? So this, this must be after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Pero, sa panahon pa lang, yeah, just before going to the cross, ng ating Panginoon, ang sabi niya, I saw Satan fell like lightning from heaven. Ito yung pala yan. Right? Wala na. Uh, wala na talaga sila. Kung mapapansin ninyo sa Book of Job, right, nakakapalit pa na ang pansalangit si Iba, si Satan. Kahit na yung mga angels niya, nakakapalit pa na ang pansalangit siya. And sa, sa langit pa siya, nang a-accuse ng mga, ba, mga believers. Eh, siguro, kung hindi lang naitapon na rin si Satan at uh, Pantaraga, dito na nag-permanent na uh, resident, magigyan na ng Rappi <laughs> sa, sa, sa lupa. <coughs> Kaya baka sinusumbong-sumbong na kayo lagi doon sa lupa. Masisira na tayo doon. <laughs> so, wala noon, wala na siyang access. Right? Uh, yun ang kwan, yun ang yugto ng uh, war between uh, God and Satan na itinapon na talaga siya dito. 
the great dragon was held down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. <coughs> then I heard a loud voice in heaven, Now have come the salvation and power and kingdom of our God and authority of his Messiah, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters, <coughs> who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. So that was the time na makumpleto na niya yung ba, salvation natin. Okay? Salvation has come upon the earth. They triumph over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. So it must be after the Lamb was sacrificed. They did not love their lives so much as to sink from death. But war has not rejoice. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you dwell in death. Now, yung sinasabi ni Kwan, because the saints are, uh, Kwan, are portrayed, lalo na sa prophecy, the saints are portrayed to be in heaven. Okay? Iyan ang Kwan, kahit na sa Daniel pa, uh, ibiniti, ano, inihalintulad ang mga believers sa uh, stars in heaven. At saka yung one, yung uh, mga resident sila ng heaven. Okay? Although, alam natin na yung mga Jews eh, dito sa Palestine na sa nila. Nakaanan nila. So, ito, ang ibig sabihin niya, yung mga kanyang believers. But woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. Okay? When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman. Ngayon, itong woman, kanyan, symbol ng uh, church yan. Okay? So this is the true church. He pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. Si Jesus Christ yan. <clears throat> the woman was given, ang, ang interpretation ng woman, ang interpretation ng Roman Catholic dito, yung woman, si Virgin Mary. Although physically, he was, uh, what? Yes. Yeah, she was the mother uh, in, in, in his humanity. In his humanity. Pero dito, woman, kwan yan. Sa church yan. Right? Makikita nyo naman dito eh. Was the woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness. Oh, yeah. May inihanda ang Diyos na lugar para dito sa woman. Ito yung woman, yung church. Right? Yung true church ito. Pero naman kayo makikita rito yung woman na patuto. Right? Or, yun naman ang false church. Okay? Mamaya, makikita natin. The woman was given two wings of uh, a great eagle so that he, she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she should be taken care of for a time, times, and half a time. Out of the serpent's reach, then from his mouth, itong mouth ng serpent, right? and from serpent's mouth, the serpent is spewed water like a river, symbolizing people, right? uh, languages, nations, to overtake the woman and sweep her away with a torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep the commands of and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Okay? So dito, makikita natin na tinulungan, tinulungan ng Diyos ang, uh, kuan, ang uh, church, ang woman, si, si Mary, hindi naman siya nagkaroon ng woman. He's, he's not spoken of us having been given two wings. Okay, masyado mo rin talaga yung stick na. Ito rin, hindi yan talaga two wings of a great eagle. Uh, it's, it's just uh, one figure of his face for a way of escape. Right? That God provided for the true church at that time para makapunta siya doon sa wilderness. Yan. Yung uh, walang taong lugar na inihanda ng Diyos. 
para sa kanya. Para sa ganon, within that span of time, ay eh, maapan siya, maingatan siya. Okay? <clears throat> so, hihip ko pa rin eh. It, uh, yung specification ng prophecy, masyadong kwan. Uh, tsaka yung mga taong pinahabol na yun ng kwan, ng uh, po, hindi na rin na kwan, naabot sa kanila eh. <coughs> Nilamon ng mag, ng uh, earth, ng wilderness. Alright. So, <coughs> magkakapan ito, magkakarugtong. Yung mga panit. Kumbaga, uh, mga snapshots, pero parehong wal, pareho ang uh, tinutukoy. Alright. Ngayon, may katanungan po ba kayo? Before we, kwan, Kasi pupunta tayo doon sa uh, babae naman, uh, false. Ito, ito yung true church. Right? The true church was tortured in the wilderness during the papal persecution. <coughs> yung wilderness na yan, yan yung new world. Tinawag nila doon. Nangyayon ay tinatawag ng ating United States. Okay. <coughs> Wala pong katanungan. Yung doon po yan sa ano, yung deep grants ko na. Ah, ito, ginagamit ito ng SDA. Right. Ginagamit ito ng SDA. Ten Commandments daw yan. Yeah. Well, that's not Ten Commandments. Uh, ang sumulat nito, si John. <coughs> Kiki ki John, malinaw ki John, kung ano yung tinatawag niyang commands. Yes. Okay. Ang tawag ni John, doon sa law, o mga commands na ibinigay ng Diyos kay Moses, ang tawag niya, the law. Okay? At yun naman talaga ang buwan, ang uh, dapat na tawag, the law. And the law had 610 commandments, including the Ten Commandments. Okay? Key kwan, key uh, John, yung sulat niya, Gospel of John. Tapos, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John. Tapos, Revelation. Itong limang, uh, pan, limang books na sinulat ni Apostle John, consistent siya sa paggamit ng mga terms niya. Pag sinabi niyang commandments of God, he does not refer to the law. Tinatawag niyang law. Right? He refers to the new commands of Christ. Lalo na yung Sabi ni Cristo, Now I give you a new commandment that you should love one another as I have loved you. Okay? New command yun dahil new ang kwan. Ang uh, reference point. Right? Hindi na yung love your neighbor as yourself. Na ang love sa Old Testament, <coughs> ang standard niya, yung love mo sa self. Pero ngayon sa New Testament, bago ang uh, command to love because the command to love now has a higher standard which is the standard which is the love of God or the love of Christ <laughs> sa kanyang one ang natin boss okay? and this is a much higher kind of love okay? yan ang commands na sinasabi niya at yung mga sinabi ni Jesus Christ na ipinagbili niya at sabi niya pangaral niyo ang one ang banghelyo sa lahat ng uh, nilalang Sino mong manampalataya, mabili niya gan, may uh, maliligtas. Kung hindi manampalataya, ay hindi ba? At pagkatapos, ang sabi niya, make disciples of all nations, uh, baptizing them, and teach them all the things that I have commanded you. Now, ang commands ni Jesus Christ na papaloob sa uh, tatlo. Yung sarili niya, mismo, right? his own self, yung salita niya at saka yung gawa niya. Okay? So, his person works and words. Yan ang kwa niya, turo niya. So, pagka nakilala mo siya, in his person works and works, yun ang balik kuman niya sa iyo. Eh. Okay? Yun ang ipinagagawa niya. Sabi nga ni Peter, that we should follow his uh, steps. Okay? He left us an example that we should follow in this steps. Hindi ito kwan, hindi ito uh, tulad ng law ni Moses na may mga numbers. 
right? Wala itong one. Numbers. Itong commandments ni Jesus Christ, uh, part ito. Hindi ito another code. Right? Uh, merong mga Kristiyano, uh, kinuha nila lahat yung one. Yung mga uh, sinabi ni Jesus Christ na dapat doon. Uh, at gumawa sila, eto raw yung New Testament pattern. Uh, eh, parang gumawa naman sila, parang gumawa rin sila ng Torah na naman. Right? New, New Testament law na lang. Right? No, that's not the intention of God. That's not the intention of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Ang intention ni Jesus Christ, yung maging katulad niya, yung uga, katulad ng ugali niya, yung ugali niya. And this has to do with principles rather than written, written commands. Right? Yung, uh, yung fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, uh, kindness, gentleness, yun lahat ng yun. Pagka yun ay na-impart sa yun ng Holy Spirit. Right? Yung commands ni Jesus Christ, uh, nando na. Nando na sa lahat. And that can be applied in any situation, in any one, uh, at any given time. Pwede mong i-apply yun. Pwede mong i-apply ang love, irrespective of what, like time and place. Pwede mong i-apply yan. Pwede mong i-apply yung fruit of the Spirit, irrespective of what, time, at saka what, uh, place. Ibig sabihin, applicable na yan sa lahat. Hindi tulad ng law. Very specific na nakasulat doon. Pagka hindi na nakasulat, you are at a loss what to do. Kaya ang dami nating sitwasyon ngayon na hindi na covered ng one, hindi pwede i-covered ng law ng Moses. Wala pang internet nun eh. Wala pang cyber law. Okay, so yung commands na yan, hindi yan yung ten commandments. Na tulad ng pinalalabas o nating mga kapatid na SDA. The testimony of Jesus Christ, about testimony about Jesus Christ, that's the gospel. It's a spirit, spirit of praise. Yung nangyayari kasi po yun, yung pagka, pag binabanggit nila yan, parang um, prescriptive, prescriptive. Um, so, yun yung gagawin daw ng mga tao. So, prescription. Samantala, contextually, it is descriptive. Hindi describe lang. Hindi siya prescription. It's not something uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> Okay, so <coughs> dito makikita natin ang isang collaborative uh, passage passages na nakasunatan giving more of uh, light dun sa pinag-usapan natin Now let's go to Revelation 17 Babylon, prostitute, <clears throat> on the beast. Yeah. <coughs> One of the seven angels who had the seven vows came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. Ibig sabihin, panito. Maraming tao ang uh, panya, nilukuha niya. Uh, maraming tao ang nagdadala sa kanya. Okay? <coughs> Prostitute ito. Now, if, if a, a, a uh, clean woman represents uh, the church, the true church, ito prostitute ito, it represents the apostate church. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <coughs> ito yung church na tumalikot. Yeah. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. Nakasakay siya dun sa Now, <coughs> Kung sasabihin mong nakasakay siya sa beast, kung yung beast ay Papal Rome, sino ito? Papal Rome din. Bakit? 
yung base political power right itong babae na prosti pa nito ito yung church na dala-dala nitong political power na ito in other words kasi magkasama yung kwan eh church and state dito yung church yung state ang beast yung church ang babae na nakasakay sa beast na na kwan yo right so it is the same Alright? Sineparate lang yung political power at saka yung religious. Right? Ang ibig sabihin, itong religious power nito, dinadal ang nagdadala nito, yung one in peace. Okay? At yung mga taong kinahukuhan nito. The woman was dressed, by the way, kanya, ha? the same beast yan, seven heads and ten horns. The same beast ng Revelation 13. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She had a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people. Dahil nag-persecute nga ito eh. Right? And uh, ang sabi doon sa binasa natin, the, the saints were given to him. Right? To prevail against them. Yeah, napatay. In God's holy people, the blood of those who bear testimony, who bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. And the angel said, ngayon tatangin ninyo, bakit ka uh, pan Babylon? Ang uh, one, Oh, kinamit. Bakit hindi Egypt? Bakit hindi Assyria? Bakit Babylon? Ngayon, ang Babylon, associated siya sa water. Ang Babylon, ang Babylon, dumadaan sa panya, sa city ng Babylon, yung Tigris-Euphrates River. Okay. Nasa Iraq pa rin yan. Hanggang ngayon, ganun pa rin ang tawag nila sa pan, river na yan, Euphrates River. Okay. <clears throat> ang Babylon, nakakuan siya, parang nakaupo siya sa river, river na to, Euphrates. Kaya, kinuhang kwan, kinuhang uh, description dito. Dahil itong woman na to, nakaupo siya sa tubig. At the same time na nakaupo siya sa, o na dinadala siya, ng uh, uh, ng beast so dinadala siya ng mga tao ibig sabihin okay? ganun din naman ang kwan yung river ng, uh, ng Babylon yung river kung saan nakapatong ang kwan ang uh, city ng Babylon yun po ang ginamit ni Cyrus the Great yung river na yun para pasukin niya yung uh, may mga pan yun eh may mga ano na dito uh, gates yung river hindi ka pwedeng kwan hindi ka pwedeng uh, tumaan kasiadong malalim yun eh pero ang hindi alam ng kwan ng uh, Babylon gumawa ng diversion si kwan si Cyrus dinivert niya yung ilog kaya yung kwan yung mga uh, river yung uh, tubig sa river, bumaba. Okay? Nung ma-divert niya at napababa niya yung tubig sa kwan na dumadaan sa Babylon, dun, dun, dun sila dumaan sa kwan. Sa ilalim. Right? Dinivert nila yung kwan, yung tubig. Nung hanggang kwan, siguro, mga hanggang, um, kahit na hanggang dito na lang ang tubig, pwede nang lumusong yung kwan, yung army. <coughs> At nandiyan, makikita nyo rin yan sa Isaiah. Uh, Cyrus dried up the rivers of Babylon. Nabasa yan ni Cyrus the Great. Dahil si Cyrus the Great, hinulaan siya ni Isaiah 100 years bago siya ipanganak. Right? Kaya nabasa yan ni, ni Cyrus. And Cyrus uh, must have had the conviction na siya yung sinutukoy ni Iwan. Okay, Isaiah. He was he was named by what? By Isaiah, Cyrus. By name, talaga tinawo siya. 
At uh, ang sabi dun sa kung tinawag siya na servant ng Diyos na gagawin niya ang ipapagawa niya. Iikukan niya, sasakupin niya ang Babylon, he will dry up the rivers of Babylon, at pakakawalan niya yung mga captives. Ito siya yung mga uh, exiles na, kwan, na Israelites. And that's exactly what uh, Cyrus the Great did. Right? So, yung Babylon, associated siya dun sa tubig. Para siyang city na nakaupo sa tubig. At dahil dun sa kwan na yun, yung uh, figure na yun, itong babaeng ito, tinawag na Babylon. Nakaupo siya sa tubig tulad na Babylon. Okay? Maari magtanong kayo, bakit na uh, kwan? Babylon, bakit hindi uh, kung anong tawa, okay? Yan po ang daina. Ang similarity sila sa Babylon na nakaupo rin sa uh, tubig. Uh, then the angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides. <clears throat> and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and ten horns. The beast which you saw once was, now is not. So, itong kwan ito, itong yugtong uh, ito, was, nasa kwan, nasa power. Right? Nasa power pa yung beast. Ngayon, is not. Hindi siya kwan, nasa power. And yet, he will come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. The inhabitants of the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world, will be astonished when they see the beast, because it was once, what it, it once was, now is not, and yet it will come. Natatandaan niyo yung Bible. <coughs> yung Antichrist, ang ibig sabihin ng Antichrist, he will imitate Christ. Hindi ibig sabihin ng Antichrist, eh openly, he will rebel against Christ. Right? <coughs> Hindi. Yung Antichrist, he, he will ape Christ. Alam niyo ba yung mga ape? Kung, kung anong gawin mo, pag gumanong ka, siya, gaganyan din. Basta kung ano mo, kaya kaano ka ng kilikili. Eh. Pansinin niyo yung mga unggoy. Right? <coughs> Lalo na yung mga uh, domesticated na unggoy. Kung anong gawin mo, gagawin niya. Parang ganun ang Antichrist, hindi ape niya. Si Jesus Christ, Diniscribe siya sa Revelation din, who was, and is, and is the Son. Kinagaya rin ito ng Antichrist. Once was, not is, pero darating. Kinuha niya, kina, kinagaya niya. Ini-ape niya, kaya siya talaga ngayon, Antichrist talaga eh. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain for a little, only a little while. The beast who once was and now is, is not, is an eight king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. Ibig sabihin, merong parang pang eight pero kung kasama siya doon sa seven, na darating pa. Ngayon, yung, uh, yung beast, ang, ang state niya, ang state niya ngayon, is not. Kahit healing pa. Nag-heal pa siya. Right? Pero darating ang panahon, mag-open ulit siya. May, may comeback siya. Talaga. Now, Sabi ko nga, why are Christians looking somewhere else for the Antichrist to come? There is only one reason. Hindi nila alam ang tunay na gospel. Okay? Pag alam mo ang tunay na gospel, life, death, and resurrection in Jesus Christ, and with all its implications in our lives, saka sa, sa, sa doctrine natin, sa ating ethic. Pagka alam mo yun, right? alam mo na ang doktrina nitong beast na ito ay kontra dun sa ating 
Jasper Udenauer. Now, <clears throat> I had the opportunity to <coughs> study in depth Roman Catholic doctrine. Nakasama ko ng ba mga Australian missionaries for several years. Wala kami ng ginawa kundi pag-aralan kung ano talaga ang doctrine ng Roman Catholic Church. And you would be amazed, it is not a bulb righteousness by works. Hindi yan parang ban. Kitang-kita mo, oh, kitang Hindi. If you go to their official ban doctrine, it's a very subtle form of salvation by works. Right? <clears throat> Briefly, ipapaliwanag ko sa inyo kung paano. Kung pa May lugar sa kanila yung ginawang passion and death ni Jesus Christ. Okay? Pero, ang, ang uh, purpose, kaiba. Kesa sa unawa natin talaga at sa tinuturo ng mananang sulatan. Jesus' passion and death purchased grace. For, for us. Yeah. Ibig sabihin, yung uh, kwan, yung ginawang uh, sacrifice ni Jesus Christ, ang pinambili ng grace para sa atin. Baliktad eh. Mm. Yung grace ang nagbigay sa atin kay Christ. Mm. Baliktad. Now, the reason why uh, that is so, na Dahil wala daw tayong pambili. Because we are sinners, meron tayong original sin, hindi natin pwedeng bilhin or mamerit ang grace ng Diyos. Therefore, Jesus Christ merited the grace of God for us. Para sa ganun, maibigay sa atin yung grace. Now, by grace, the Roman Catholic means a supernatural power na ibibigay sa iyo ng Diyos para linisin ka interiorly. Okay? To cleanse you interiorly. Yan ang mga termino nila. Grace will cleanse you interiorly so that you become pleasing to God. At pagka naging pleasing ka na through the grace given to you by God, purchased by Jesus Christ, pagka naging pleasing ka na sa Diyos, you will be saved. So may words in it. Ha? Very subtle nga eh. Dahil dinagamit yung grace, dinagamit yung passion and death ni Jesus Christ. Pero iba ang meaning sa kanila. Okay? <coughs> Kaya, ang isa sa mga, Juan, ang isa sa mga central uh, o major point of doctrine ng Roman Catholic you cannot be justified before God. Hindi ka pwedeng mapawalang sala sa harap ng Diyos unless you are first regenerated. Dahil yung grace ang magre-regenerate sa'yo. Ang magbabago sa'yo. Right? At pagka yung grace na yun, nabago ka na, then you will be acceptable to God. Ngayon, Ginagamit nila yung grace? Ginagamit nila yung uh, life, death, resurrection ni Jesus Christ? Ginagamit nila yung justification? Ginagamit nila yung regeneration? But they have totally changed the meaning. Pwede nyo i-research yan. Nasa hapan yan. Open naman yung kanilang uh, one, website. Punta kayo doon sa Kwan, Council of Trent. Yan ang kan, official uh, 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 Catholic doctrine. Council of Trent. That, that was the uh, one, formulation of their doctrine against the Protestant Reformation. Okay? Trent. Council of Trent. Council of Trent. Which was it was a council call in order to refute the Protestant Reformation. So, kung hindi mo kwan, kung hindi mo talaga susuriin, they, were, they are using the same uh, words 
that you read in the Bible. Pero binigyan nila ng different meaning. Now, eto ang one. The only, the only uh, person or the only system that can dispense grace to to one to man is the church. Yeah. Ang church lang ang pwedeng magbigay ng grace na ibinigay ng na binili ni Jesus Christ para sa atin. Ibinigay sa church para i-dispense ng church yung grace. So meron tayo, meron silang seven sacraments. Through the sacraments, grace is dispensed. One of them is baptism. So pagka nabaptize ang one, ang bata, uh, that is uh, one, dispensing of grace. Ibig sabihin, hinuhugasan ng grace itong bata nito. Inaalis niya yung tinatawag nilang original sin. O yung sin of nature ng bata. Pagka ikinasal ka, isa yan sa panila, sacrament. Right? And of course, the sacrament of the mass. Right? The Eucharist nila. Where the bread becomes the real flesh of Jesus Christ and the wine the real blood of Jesus Christ. Yung itong tawagin nila, transubstantation. Right? Yung talagang elements, nagiging, nagiging talagang tunay na flesh and blood. Jesus Christ. Okay? At dahil sa church lang ang nagdi-dispense ng grace through the sacraments, hindi ka makaka-avail ng grace sa church. Kaya noon, takot na takot na disfellowship ang kahit na mga hari pag ang tawag nila excommunication. Takot na takot silang ma-excommunicate dahil alam nila, paniwala nila, they will never, they can never avail of the grace of God apart from the church. <coughs> Yan ang pan. Yan ang uh, in, in, pan. in a nutshell, <coughs> pan, Roman Catholic uh, doctrine. Now, bakit naghahanap ng Antichrist, ibang Antichrist, ang mga Christian? Hindi nila alam yung pan gospel pa lang At marami sa mga man ngayon, mga Kristiyano, ibang label, label lang siguro. Right? But it is the same gospel ng Roman Catholic Church. It is the same way of salvation. Maraming naniniwala ng mga Kristiyano because of their changed lives, they will be saved. Walang mayan. Walang pinag-iba yan sa from Catholic okay. So, <clears throat> dahil umalis na sa tunay na gospel ang mga Christian, ina-abandon na rin nila yung concept ng Antichrist na nag-corrupt ng gospel. Corrupted na rin yung gospel mo eh. Pareho na lang kayo. Siguro, iba lang yung label ng sayo, pero ang, ang, ang kwan niya, ang laman niya, kapareho na nung kwan. Right? I've been telling this to kwan, yung nang nakakausap ko sa FB. Sabi ko, yung inyong doktrina na regeneration before faith. Roman Catholic to the core yan. Yan ang kwan. Ipinigay ko pa yung kwan, yung... Uh, yung uh, Council of Trent <coughs> close doon, anong chapter ang paliwanag nila kinuha nila iniiba nila yung pan paliwanag. but that is the same uh, one, Roman Catholic doctrine no mas is sacred dahil doon sa pagbabago sa pagbabago na nakikita sila maraming mga Kristiyano akala nila dahil sa pagbabagong nakita nila sa kanilang buhay dala ng new birth, dala ng ban, new life, dala ng ban. Akala nila, doon sila naniligtas. <coughs> and it's uh, pan, a very subtle uh, pan, uh, perversion of the gospel of Christ. <laughs> Kaya ngayon, uh, paano mo sasabihin ang tie-crisis ito? Eh? 
Pareho lang mong tayo ng custom. <laughs> eh di parang tinahog mo rin at high price mo pa. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. Okay. So, napakahalaga niyan. That the further you you move away right, from the gospel, na na-rediscover ng Protestant Reformation during the 16th century, and by discovering the gospel, they were able to identify that the Pope was the Antichrist. Right? Dahil nakita nila yon, yung gospel na yon. Nakita nila na na-corrupt. At ang nang-corrupt ay yung kwan, ang, ang Antichrist. Na-identify nila po siya. Now, the farther you go away from that gospel, na na-rediscover nila, <coughs> ang mangyayari sa iyo, the farther you will go away also from identifying the Antichrist as the Pope. Ngayon, yung mga ano, yung mga kahit na yung mga Protestant reformers, uh, reform ano, Protestant uh, churches. Tanungin mo kung anong issue na reformation hindi nila alam. Kahit na punta ka mismo sa pan, sa US, mga anak yan ng one mga persecuted na Christians noong panahon ng naman, ay palo na rain sa Europe. Tanungin mo kung anong issue nung naman ng mga forefathers nila, hindi nila alam. Hindi nila alam, later on, right, hindi nila alam, nasisirain nila yung kwan, yung itinatag ng mga forefathers nila by creating an image to the beast. <laughs> Now, I'm not being dogmatic about this, but eventually, the United States will form an image to the West, pagsasamahin nila uli ang church and state. Now, kanya, fundamental kanya, doctrine ng, uh, pan, ng United States, separation of church and state. Diyan natin nama na yan sa kanila. Nung dalhin yan ng mga Amerikano sa atin, kaya tayo, kaya tayong doktrin na separation of church and state. Walang pakialaman ang church at saka ang state. Why? Dahil pagka yung dalawang yan ay nagkaroon ng mabuting ugnayan, the usual, the usual thing that happens is the church uses the state to propagate its beliefs. I-impose nun nila. Kailangan nila ang state para impose yung kanila eh, yung uh, religion nila. So masamang man yan, masamang uh, pangitain yung pagka naglalapit na yung kwan, yung dalawang niya, <coughs> masamang pangitain niya. <coughs> And, ito nga sinasabi ko, if we are to learn the lessons of history, huwag niyong iisipin na ngayon ay parang hindi yata mangyayari ang sinasabi ni brother. Uh, para yata ang one eh. United States magko-combine sila i-combine nila yung church and state malayo yata yan reading from one history Emperor Constantine was converted to Christianity overnight <coughs> na naginip lang siya well kwento ng one ha? kwento ng uh, sa history, na naginip si Constantine at meron siyang nakita ng one, sign of the cross. At narinig niya yung tinig. Hindi niya inaidentify kung tinig niyo ng Diyos, basta meron siyang narinig na tinig. In hoc signo vince. At sabi niya, in this sign, you will conquer. Kaya yung mga kwan, yung mga Roman soldiers na, as Roman sword na kwan, dati hindi naman uh, ubis uh, cross, hindi naman hubis cross. Kanya. Dahil ang sabi ng kwan, nung uh, napanaginipan niya, o vision niya, with this sign, you will conquer. Yun. Nakakonquer nga siya. Overnight, naging kristyano si Iwan. Si Constantine. At dahil siya ang kwan, sa ang emperor, ginawa niya kristyano lahat ng kwan. Nang nasasagupan niya. Lahat ng kwan, lahat ng nasasakupan niya, ginawa niya ang kristyano. 
Yun lang aras, army niya eh. He had the hundreds of thousands, na, probably millions na army. Eh, hindi na kayang binyagan itong buwan, itong mga Kristiyano. Pinalusong na lang sa inog. Kanya na, kanyang binyag na lang. Lumusong sa... Kaya lang, <coughs> along with the mass conversion of the well, of pagan Rome, pit-pit-pit-pit ah, nila yung kanilang mga tradisyon, yung kanilang ibang beliefs, ipinasok nila sa church. And that was the beginning of the corruption. Yung mass corruption ng church. Although before, ko na, napokorrupt na. By the time the apostles died, right, yung drift away from the true gospel na gumpisa na. Yung mga church fathers, Latin fathers, na gumpisa na sila. Hanggang sa matibelo, ang kuhan, ang prepasi. It was a gradual centuries ang pinilang. Isipin mo, from uh, kuhan, from the first century, na nabuhay si, kuhan, si uh, John, na, na buo, naganap ang power ng uh, Pope. Bishop of Rome, 538 AD. It took 30, 400 years. It took more than 400 years to develop the papacy. It's slow. Hindi na imperceptible. Hindi na mamalayan ng church. Develop nila yung papacy. So, itong babae nito, Ito yung Roman Catholic uh, Church. Power. Ito religious power na nakasakay sa political power. Dahil iisa naman kasi. Tinag-isa nila ang religious power at saka uh, political power. Okay, so uh, tingnan natin sa pan sa 18 Nandito yata yung judgment ng kwan eh. Ito mong iyayari sa kwan. Ito mong iyayari sa Roman Catholic. After this, I saw a ranger coming down from heaven. He had great authority and the earth was illumined by his splendor. With and by his words, he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. He has become a dwelling for demons. And a... Eh, a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. And then, you know, all nations, all wine. I'm not like Christ's word. The maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her. And the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxury. By the way, the the richest uh, country in the world is Vatican. Vatican is the only uh, one is the only state that is both political and religious at the same time. Ang kwan ang uh, ang Vatican. Meron siya sariling seat sa United Nations. It is a one. It is a country in itself, yung Vatican. Right? Hindi yung sakop ng Italy. Right? Sariling one ni ni ng panya yung Vatican City. That is the seat of power. <coughs> meron siyang kwan. Na meron siyang representatives in all uh, kwan countries sa atin. Uh, representative, yung Papa Nuncio. Uh, uh, siya, treat, treated siya as a political one, state. And Vatican is a state. Hindi pa niya. Right? But it is ruled by the Pope. So the Pope now is both a political power and a religious power. Ngayon, Limited lang siya sa, pan, sa Vatican. He is still healing his wounds. Pero nakita, nakita naman natin, kung na, 
kumbaga konting-konti uh, na lang ang buwan. Pana, wala na mo, wala na yung good. In fact, nakalimutan na ng tao eh. Sino ba ang nakakaalam na pan, na ang Pope was once uh, exiled by Napoleon Bonaparte? Hmm. Ang alam natin, no? Very popular yan. Inahalikan niya ng lahat ng and they take him into one uh, council lalo na mga Catholic uh, countries South America they, they counsel the Pope si, si, si Pope ang one uh, spiritual advisor uh, and probably not only spiritual advisor but political as well ang pinaka ang pinaka kwan ang pinaka mayaman na bansa ang Vatican ang Vatican meron siyang properties sa halos lahat ng bansa eh, sa atin lang eh dami po na aray ng kwan pero ang Catholic Church so kwan yan this is true right Totoo yan. That's as they grew rich from their excessive luxuries. Warning to escape Babylon's judgment. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven. Sa ibang pan, sa ibang uh, translation, for her sins are as for her sins have reached up to heaven. Ito kung baga, sukdula na. And God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Or her a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit and groan the sweet. I am not a widow, I will never mourn. Therefore, in one day, her dreams <coughs> will overtake her. Death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire. For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. <coughs> ito, inulaan na rin ni Apostle Paul ito. Right? Ang tawag ni Apostle Paul dito sa uh, power na ito. Uh, Juan, uh, man of sin. Okay? Eh, yan yung one, yun yung sinabi ni Apostle Paul sa 2 uh, Thessalonians chapter 2. Huwag kayong kwan, huwag kayong ma ano tawag ito ito, madadala ng mga balita na darating na si Jesus Christ. Kanya, may mga bagay na kailangan lumipas o bago dumating siya. At kailangan munang mahayag ito. Right? Masayin nga natin. Uh, this is important uh, pa yung, yung tinatawag nating collaborative nature of scriptures. Na hindi lang iisa ang buwan ang sasalita tungkol dito. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 <coughs> chapter 2 Ipisa natin sa verse 1 uh, yeah. okay. Sabi nito Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled all around by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by <coughs> word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Right? kasing nung panahon, nung panahon ko na, na nila, Hindi, iniwan na talaga nila yung hanap po eh nila. And mostly po, farmers naman yung mga yan eh. Hindi na, nila yung kanilang film. At uh, sa hintay na lang namin si Lord. Uh, baka magtanim kami ngayon eh, dumating si Lord, bago namin magkapas, sayang na. <laughs> Kaya isinulat ng 1 Thessalonians, sila 2 Thessalonians. 
Doon sa First Thessalonians, ang sabi ni Paul, ah, ang sabi niya, ah, ah, if you do not work, neither shall you eat. Kasi iniwanan nila yung kanilang mga trabaho eh. Paano kaya kakain niya? Pagdating naman dito, may mga nagtuturo naman na dumating na. Parang preterist eh. Right? Tapos na. Uh, tapos na lahat. Uh, dumating na si Jesus Christ. Kaya lang, dihing. <laughs> Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you I used to tell you these things and now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But no one, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. So itong lawless one na to, yung uh, man of sin o man of lawlessness, yan yung pan, yan yung antichrist. Uh, sinasabi sa Revelation at saka sa na walang iba kung hindi yung battle of right? He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the light in all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the light and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. Ang hirap pagka nire-refuse mo yung man, yung uh, truth, ahayaan ka talaga ng Diyos na man. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion. Ang Diyos na mismo ang one. Uh, magpapadala sa'yo ng delusion pag ayaw mo ng uh, katotohanan. So it's a very fearful thing to resist na pagka may light na lumarating. And light will continue to come, believe me. You will never come to a point until Jesus comes, you will never come to a point where you can say you have all the light there is that you need to know. Pagdating ni Jesus Christ, yes. Pag nakita mo na yung kwan, He who said He is the truth. Pag nakita mo na yan, yun, pwede mo na sabihin. Alam ko na nakita mo na lahat ng katotohanan at ito. But until that time comes, hindi mo haabutin yun. So, kailangan pagka receptive ka pagdating ng katotohanan. Dahil pagka nireject mo ang katotohanan na dumarating sa iyo, God will just send you strong delusion. Ikaw na mismo ang kwan. Parang maniwala ka sa hindi totoo. Kasi yung usually naman, pagdating ng kwan, dating ng uh, truth. Pero siyang masasagasaan doon sa hinahawakan mo na dati. Mm-hmm. Hindi ko na tututo. <laughs> Dapat bitawan mo. Accept what is uh, uh, a clearer light now. Right? Pag hindi mo ginawa, if you do not step with the advancing rays of light, may iwan ka. And God Himself will send you up. Uh, para magwala ka sa light. <coughs> yan ang pan, yan ang uh, mahirap sa nag-re-recheck ng pan. So, life na dumarating. Never come to a point, we will never come to a point where we can say, hindi na, hindi na ako tatanggap ng kahit na ano pa. Kompleto na to. <coughs> hindi yan ang pan. Kaya yung mga, ang, ang mark ng isang kulto, alam na nila lahat. Pag meron nagsabing, itanong mo yan si Suryano, alam nila lahat. Kulto. Alright. May ikon. Meron na po tayo naman. Nakahanda na yung ating uh, meal. Siguro pagkatapos kung may itatanong kayo.
Kung may itatanong pa kayo. Hindi kayo mas tatanong ko lang. Kasi in the history ng Amerika, ng Amerika, United States of America, if I, if I remember it, dalawa pa lang naging presidente, o isa pa lang ay naging Roman Catholic. One is the other state. I don't know the other one, but as far as I know, Meron kasi yung meron kasi yung pagkulo dun sa assassination ni JFK na lumabas at that before na he was assassinated because he's a Roman Catholic. Okay. In the history of all the 44th President Donald Trump, siya pa lang naging Roman Catholic or dalawa sila. Siya pa lang. So most of them are Protestant. Yan yung sa akin may significant yun na value. Kasi ino-observe ko rin yun eh. Pero kaya hindi yan ang think about. Hindi yan ang think about. America will get to change the Taiwan and the founding principles of America. Ang sabi ko nga, ang think ako rin. Pero pag titignan mo yung nangyari kay Juan, yung nangyari kay Robby, overnight ang mundi. Ano na ang version nila? Hindi mo isip. 